Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here to fundraise for world builders and play D&D. &D. That's my intro song. I hope you liked it. I'm Jamie. Uh, I am the community or outreach coordinator at World Builders. It is 85 degrees in the room that I'm in. I'm, I'm sure this is distracting, but I got no choices. Um, and I'm going to have my players go around, first introduce themselves, and then we'll do a second circuit to introduce their characters. So let us start with Larry. How, hello, Larry, introduce yourself. Hello, friends. Um, my name is Larry Dixon. I write books and I draw pictures and I, I work on movies sometimes. Um, I will be playing um, a, a, a somewhat atypical uh, Bowie-esque semi-androgynous Aracocra monk, my friends. Uh -huh. um, an urban bounty hunter by trade and barfly by preference. Excellent. And what is this monk's name? He is called, or, yeah, uh, they can't really tell much of a gender from outside, but uh, 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 Straker is the name. Straker. Straker. Right. That's right. All, All right. right. Let's go to Jen, yourself and your character. Hello. Uh, my name is Jen Kretschmer. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. I am a writer, producer, actor, uh doing all the things i'm one of the authors on candle keep mysteries for DD. um i am the creator of the accessibility and tabletop uh resource guide which you can find in my pinned tweet at dreamwisp um i stream on twitch as dreamwisp jen i'm part of heroes of the plains i am part of a, a new vampire the masquerade show called the nightlife uh lots of lots of fun table copy stuff um and today i will be playing shelby uh, Shelby is a fear bulg. Uh, we'll start with Druid. Yeah. We'll start with Druid. <laughs> uh, and, and Shelby is, um, very happy to be here. <laughs> Shelby is, uh, is very tall, nearly eight feet tall. Um, she has, uh, uh, long kind of auburny hair um on the darker side leaning more towards a, a kind of brown foresty it's 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 like leaves right at the kinda. end of fall yeah yeah um and and very piercing purple eyes mm -hmm. uh and she uh looks like she's been you know corn fed and and, and earned her strength through years of of muscle hustle she's a she's a hearty lady she she absolutely is i love it very happy to be here just a, a pleasant very tall hearty lady larry how mm -hmm. tall is us uh, i'm gonna probably say shelby and straker interchangeably so sorry but how uh what does straker look like we've got eric okra what height we got bowie-esque <laughs> oh you're me uh, well uh Straker is actually kind of tall for his species, and great time for a phone call, right? Um, it was on purpose. Jeez. Um, so anyway, um, he's a little tall for an Aracocra, which would put him at about mm, five foot eight, five foot ten, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, kind of a um, long crested golden eagle type. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks bulkier than he is, but still probably snap him like a twig mm -hmm. uh and um yeah he, he lives off towards the city but this is definitely uh his favorite place to drink because this is where this is where shelby is and where mary is and you know where the mm, all the good folks are uh the uh people of negotiable virtue <laughs> Well, let us introduce our final player slash character of negotiable virtue, Julia. <laughs> that is my favorite introduction ever. Uh, <laughs> I am uh, Julia Maddalena, uh, she, her. Uh, I am a portrait painter and illustrator. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen me around. I did this background uh, behind us. Um, and you will find me in the new Mystic Libations book coming out. Uh, 
you know, just I, I, I am all over the place. You can just find whatever I'm doing on my social media, J Madalena, Instagram, Twitter, tw Twitch. It's all the same username. Try to make it easy. Um, and tonight I will be playing an, a returning character, Mary Shelley, um, who is an Eladrin necromancer. Um, and she just wants here. She's here to make friends quite literally. Um, so yeah, that's, oh, and then appearance. She's got also very purple eyes, long black hair, um, is in black robes, very pale skin. Um, and I would say height wise, uh, probably hovering around five, nine, uh, you know, the Eladrin fae blood. <laughs> I love it. I love that D and D so often can be either like super tough or grim dark, and we're just a party of friends, of shenanigan riddled friends. It's just gonna be fun. Uh, so thank you to all of my players for coming out tonight and uh, rolling a couple of dice. It, one of Julia's incredible projects is actually the background of our stream right now. Uh, the tavern set behind us was done by Miss Julia. And um, if you notice, there's a little blue Dracus man in the corner. Uh, I don't know if hopefully our, our yeah. This way. <laughs> that way. Uh, his name is Duke. He is the bartender um, and he will be in the story. So I wanted to introduce himself, introduce him as well. He's sort of my, he's kind of, he's kind of my stand in. So um, we are so excited. We are playing a 5e game. I, I just have like sweat rolling down my face. I'm so sorry if I'm just like wiping my face the whole time. Um, we are playing a quick 5e adventure set in a town that's kind of a suburb of the big city. It's about an hour out. Uh, it's Before we start, small. Jamie, what, what are we playing for tonight? I, fun, right? Just for fun. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Cheers. Thank you, Jen. We are playing for World Builders, which is the charity that I work for. Uh, this is our Geeks Doing Good Capacity Fundraiser, which means um, this is the way that we manage to not pay or not take a cut of our other fundraisers. So when we fundraise for Heifer or a smaller organization, we've done some really cool um, sort of more local sponsorships. Those are 100%. We don't take an administrative cut. That's this. So everything that you guys can contribute means that we can keep going and, you know, have health insurance and those really lovely, delightful things. Um, so thank you to everybody who has supported, retweeted, hung out in chat, checked out the Indiegogo. The link is down below. It is just full of geeky, incredible wares. Some of them will only be on the Indiegogo. Some of them will be cheaper on the Indiegogo because it's kind of our, our you know, initial release of a product. There's all sorts of exclusives and signed things and fun, neat little I don't know, I get the mental visual of walking through a, a bazaar with tables stacked with interesting items. There's just all sorts of lovely things. Um, so go check it out. If you have a couple bucks to send our way, it is so appreciated. And we really hope you enjoy this game. Hopefully I'll remember to plug my own charity again, eventually. I'm sure my players will remind me. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Um, actually, I'm going to, so I'm going to let you guys narrate for a minute because I'm going to go get myself a handkerchief so I can pat my face while we play. Um, but you are all just outside of this beautiful tavern. It's two-story wood. It's familiar. It feels like home to the three of you. Um, it's very welcoming. You know, the, the sound is it's a buzz. It's not like a roar coming out of the door, but it's definitely not, you know, quiet and calm in there. There's a, there's a chatter. Oh my goodness. There's a chatter. Um, uh, there's, let's see, uh, on the, on, one second. And we have the barking of the bar's corgi. Yeah, Duke has a corgi. That's his name is Ranger. He is a ranger. Oh, absolutely. 
He's got a little ranger hat. Tiny quiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I made one of those. Hey, I was just going to say, this is the Corgi tax for a moment. If you hear this jerk barking in the background, at least he's cute. I'm going to go lock him in the bedroom while you guys talk about your cool D&D card, Jen. Yeah, so there are two things. There are inspiration tokens, which you can get this year, which have tokens from me. Larry, you did one as well, right? I did. Yeah, uh, Black Dice Society, um, all sorts of amazing, wonderful people in the D&D community. Uh, we got to design our own tokens. Um, and you can you can use those yourself. You can get them for your DM. It's a, it's a lovely way to celebrate uh, tabletop gaming. Um, but last, last year we did uh, cards. And, and that had been going for a few years, but those cards are, uh, you can use it once in and ever um, and cash it in for whatever the card is. And again, those are, were designed by people within the community. Um, me, B. Dave Walters, Todd Kenrick, uh, Chris Perkins, the cast of Critical Role. Um, who, who am I forgetting? The Adventure Zone, I think. Did the one. Adventure Zone did some, yeah, that's right. Um, all sorts of wonderful friends. Um, and it was it was a blast to get to design it. So uh, please check those things out uh, if you if you want to introduce you know chaos and delight uh, on behalf of us um, <laughs> into your home and games. Who wouldn't right? <laughs> you told them of course it. Then please please do so. Yeah. Thank and you a complete so. set is like that's that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. very. That really there is. There's a lot of silly stuff that can go on when you have those cards. There's just, it's, it be, it really mixes it up. I think it's a great, great thing to bring to your group. And when you bring it to your group, you can be like, yeah, I got these to support world builders and then tell them all about what we do. And then you're getting like a two for the price of one. Literally you bought one thing, you spread mm -hmm. awareness to what six people. And it's oh, yeah. just as much chaos as the deck of many things. Yes. Like e easily. Deck of many things, but for a good cause. Yeah. That's a pretty good pitch, Jen. Good one. Yeah. That was good. You're welcome. Yeah. Like, so, like she's a professional, you know? It's like she's, it's like she works with the, the D and D world all the time. <laughs> so you all what? are standing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong <for> Jen. Nerds. <laughs> So you're she standing says. outside this tavern, the three of you. I think you probably saw um, Straker flying in and, and kind of lands down on the green next to you as you walk across. And there's golden light coming from the windows. It's dusk. And um, you see outside, and there's a little car. Outside, there is a little carved sign. And it has a uh, just a, a joyful looking figure with a little goat and a little chicken carved into this nice wooden painted sign. And then there's a little flag hanging off of it, a little rainbow flag, as you guys enter in to a warm, comf a comfortable heat. Maybe it's nice and cool in there. <laughs> Fairly full tavern. And uh, what would you like to do? Well, without a doubt, I'm going to do my usual and hop up onto a rafter. All right. It's a raptor on a rafter. <laughs> do you make that joke? Of course. <laughs> I have my standards and I will not rise above them. <laughs> and I'm sure that Mary and Shelby have heard that joke every, every night yeah. for a long time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's why they're my friends. 
I turn to Shelby and I say, I mean, this is the only bar in town that accepts goats. It's right on the sign. It's true. And, and I still don't quite understand why you have to have that sort of system of exchange, though. Goats? Yeah. I mean, I... They're not very portable. But also, why are you just paying for... I just don't understand the concept of, of sharing your... I mean, wouldn't you just take care of people if you can take care of people? Oh, yeah. No, I think that, I think most people should do that. Well, when your goat's been good to you, you know, you want to take care of it. Um, and besides, if these are collectible goats. This is a non-fungible goat. Uh, you want to show it off. An Nobody NFT. can duplicate that goat. Is it, and I hold up Mordecai. He's a skeletal goat. He's got like a bag inside his rib cage, just carrying my goods. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a luggage goat skeleton. Yeah. And uh, thankfully at this point, the bar, you know, there's not a ton of like supernatural stuff in this town. There's awareness of magic. Everybody's accepted of all the different races. Um, you know, the ceilings are pretty high because there's, you know, you probably still have to duck a little bit, but um, at eight feet. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the vibe is very warm, but very humble a lot of farmers weavers brewers kind of the the chill um and that's probably why you guys kind of like it because there's less of the oh there goes kevin again shooting off spells because he got too drunk situation it's a it's a little more low-key out there wait loki's here <laughs> there it you look across and there is a black crow sitting and just staring at you and you know his name is loki he's a real crow he's a crow not a a aarakocra but mm -hmm. yeah loki's there <laughs> i will hang by one foot and go ah he returns your ah oh being friends with corvids is one of the best things in the world yeah he he fluffs up his feathers really big oh. and clacks his beak a couple times and then he looks down and um, he actually goes and lands on Mordecai, on Mordecai's little skeleton skull and gives him a couple like thunk, thunk, thunks on the forehead. And you see Mordecai kind of look up and then you watch Loki fly out the front door uh, to go have a, a nice evening hunt before the sun goes completely down. But he, you know, he was waiting for you so he could say, you know, hey to all his buddies before he went out for the night. That's probably part of your routine as well. It is. So what's next? You see, and you, something that's strange, something you all notice right out the gate is that Duke is not standing at the bar. And Duke is always just standing at the bar unless he's going to get some fries or something. And then he's like, pew, pew, there and back. It's not, yeah. and you guys have been here for a couple minutes We're, now and no Duke. No Duke anywhere. You know, you just don't see him. Um, are there, is there like a bar, um, uh, a bar pet? Is there a, are there dogs or cats or, you know, there's a corgi pseudo dragons that run around. There is a corgi that is, uh, curled up by the front door. It appears that he is the bouncer <laughs> and pays very close attention to who comes and goes and, uh, what is going on. You, th you know that he mostly looks, his name is Ranger. He mostly looks out the door, um, but he he does kind of keep an eye on the whole place if you want to talk to him. I'm going to start casting uh, Speak with Animals. It takes me a little while, but I'm going to go ahead and start cool. prepping to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And what does Mary do? Um, Mary is... I think she's probably a little distracted. I think she's a bad chooser as far as drinks go. She's probably up at the bar, hasn't quite, I mean, maybe has noticed Duke is gone, but she's like, quick, before he gets back, I need to make a decision this time. So she's just sweating, looking at the menu going, oh no, but that one's Shelby's favorite. I probably shouldn't go for that one this time. Oh no. And she's just kind of fretting over that and will eventually kind of cue into what everyone else is doing. And those right. moments in time always feel like forever to marry. So it's not, you you know, 
who knows how long it's been since Duke went behind, went back in the bar or in the kitchen. Yeah, and I know Mary has anxiety uh, issues every once in a while, so I will just drop down behind the bar and uh, get a nice uh, a dark mead and and just kind of slide it over, and suddenly I'm the bartender. <laughs> And you, you not Duke. <laughs> well, when you know the place this well and Duke's not here, somebody's still got to sling the brew. Yeah. No, you're doing a great job. You should really apply here. I wonder, does Duke need help? I mean, it seems like maybe he does right now. I don't I, see. I do wonder. You know, so, the, Mary, Shelby's starting early tonight. I mean, Shelby's not usually speaking with animals until after the fifth drink. Do you think she already drank? Oh, that's that's a hundred percent not true. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby is uh, not so great with the people skills. It's the speaking to people that tends to be after the fifth drink. <laughs> Why am I Shelby? <laughs> We're all Shelby. <laughs> We're all a little Shelby on the inside. Uh, I'll start Shelby off with a green tea. How's that? Excellent. And Thanks. as you are chatting and sort of there, you, there's a little bit of clinking and clanking going um, through the curtain sort of to the back kitchen, you see Duke's little snoot poke out and he sees you guys and goes, <laughs> and you all somehow understand his Dracus language. Um, and he says, please, 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 please come help me. And, and ducks back into the kitchen. Uh, and Duke is usually very calm, so this is kind of strange. I look towards the door to make sure Shelby heard that from the front door. Otherwise, I'll go poker. Did you? Shelby, you probably wouldn't have, if you were like focused on the dog, you probably wouldn't have noticed. Okay. So, Mary, are you going to get her or? Yeah, I'll, I'll look at Stricker and go, uh, I'm, I'll join you in a minute. You go see him i'm gonna make sure shelby uh comes back with us all right uh bar will be on hold soon everybody so you see the regulars all kind of they you know their beers are like three quarters gone but they're they know they'll get their beers it's duke he's not gonna leave them alone for too long right. So I'll go back up to Shelby and just kind of poke her on the shoulder. I mean, I imagine even if she's like crouched down with the dog, it's still kind of a bit of a reach. <laughs> but I go, uh, hey, Duke seems a little freaked out in the back and he waved us over. Do you want to come with oh. us? Oh, Duke's here? Yeah, he, he's yeah. here. Yeah, let's go. And you see Ranger goes, oh. He kind of looks like he wants to come with you, but then he looks at the door and he looks like he wants to come with you. And then he sits square in the middle of the door. Like, this is my job and I'm going to do it. And you guys walk back into the kitchen. I give him a pat. Oh, I thank him. He looks very serious, but you know, he loves it. Um, so you get into the kitchen and Duke is standing kind of with his hand on like the table and again, in that like growl, growl, growl speech, he says, it has been a hell of a night. Ella is missing, which you know to be his fairly new barmaid. She's only been working there for probably three or four weeks. Um, and he goes, I can't find Ella. The, uh, the, the other party that is usually here, you guys kind of know there's another group of about three or four adventurers. Um, he goes, the, uh, the, the Regal St Stallions is what they they call themselves. It's a stupid name, but the Regal Stallions went out this morning and never came back. Uh, they were gonna go clear out a kobold den and you know that should be easy for them, but they're not here. So I'm worried about them, but I gotta attend the bar. And I come back here to refill the, the kegs and I've, I've got a missing keg. So I could really use your guys' help tonight. Oh, yeah, of course. Sure, but uh, I mean, I suppose we could 
gather up some money and buy you a new keg? Um, he says, well, the problem is I'm kind of the, you know, that I work directly with a lot of the brewers and most of the smaller bars come to me for their kegs. So it's, it, unless you, you know, unless we go to the brewer and, and get brand new, but I just, I just got four new kegs yesterday and now I've only got one and, you know, drips of one in the front. So I, I don't, you know, we're not drinking them that fast. I know that. So you had four and you have one? Yeah. Well, who's been around? Well, you know, it's it's been the usual crew. Uh, you got the, the group of miners there around, not pickaxe kind of miners. <laughs> said that right. and was like oh, oh children no, at we the know you don't yeah. serve to children here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh the only uh, the childlike <laughs> yeah Ch- maybe childlike acting but no t- no actual children um the the potter's guild uh you know they've been around they came through because we needed some new um pottery and uh and you know, Ella, obviously, she's she's been in the kitchen more, more than anybody, but she's also missing. And, I, you know, she it, it could she could have run think off she could have taken the kick. She I guess it but she could make a, a nice, slice. comfy place to take a nap. Maybe she needed a place to take a nap. I mean, she's she is a halfling and the keg is kind of as big as her. And so I don't know how she get two of them out is just sort of what I was thinking. Maybe oh. she was, this was a whole heist thing, but I don't know. I, I believed her story. I usually have a pretty good read on people. Oh, but this is strange because how much does a cask weigh? Oh, it's a, uh, it's pretty heavy. I go over mm-hmm. and I pick one up and I go, oh, they're not that heavy. Yeah. It's easy for you. <laughs> It'd be like picking up like a, a folding chair. <laughs> I have a uh, Mordecai in tow, and I'm just like I'm gonna instruct him to like sniff around like a hound dog, <laughs> and see if he can pick up anything around the missing case. Great. Um, let's use your perception for Mordecai and roll a perception check, but with advantage because he's helping. Cool. 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 Um, well, that first one is a 21, and the second one was a dirty 20. Well, that, you know. You may not have the inner olfactory systems anymore, but, you know. He's, he's got the vibes. He's got um, the um, He senses so, the trace of what once was. Mm, he, you see, he goes into, like, that, that um, tropey like ghost mode where he sees like blue traces of everything that's been happening before but none of you have access to that it's just the skeleton goat can see into the matrix and um, he see you know he sees large boot prints kind of in the the you know it's not dusty Duke wouldn't have a dusty tavern but he sees him right outside the door kind of on the ones on the way in are a little lighter and then the ones on the way out are much deeper and kind of the mud that's out back. Um, and he sees they're fairly big boots. Um, and he sees that there are, what else does Mark I see? Oh, he sees Ella's apron hung up on a hook and um, it looks like because he's such an observant goat, he knows that she always takes her apron home at the end of the night to wash it and always has like a fresh clean apron at the beginning of the night. And her apron still looks dirty from last night. It looks like she never came to work. Um, And so you know, Duke said she was missing, but didn't say anything more than that. But it looks like she's been missing for more than, you know, 15 minutes. It's, it's not been an extra long smoke break. Okay. And mm. I 
perceive all this from like just kind of go telepathy <laughs> yeah i think that he's you just sort of see him sniff around do his like and it, it sort of makes like a little rattling noise as he's sniffling um and you see he pauses by the kegs and he pauses by the apron uh you see that he pauses by a jar of pickles and just stares at it for a minute and then looks at Mary, and then looks at the jar of pickles, and then looks at Mary. Mary looks at Duke. <laughs> Duke goes, you know those are for the goat. You can give okay. him one. I, I run over and I open it up and I give him the pickle. <laughs> With his skeleton, tunk, 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 eats the pickle as reward for his excellent perception work. Um, but yeah, that's... I might retcon that he notices more, but that's all he knows yeah. off the break. So uh, I'll relay this to the group and I'll also mention, um, so do you guys think that maybe she could have gotten like snatched with the cakes? Like, do you think she's in danger too? I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, I could fly over and check a residence. That would be a good idea. Because of my profession, I figure I probably know where she lives, so... Or we could all go together and try and find out just in case something is wrong. Or is it... Did we get any sense of what, what direction things might have gone in? We, we, there were boot prints, right? Mm-hmm. It can, we like go, can I go take a look at those and maybe try and track? Yes, Absolutely. Would you want to do a survival roll for that? Sure. Absolutely. Let's do that. 17. 17 is pretty good. So you see that the boots, um, like Mordecai saw, lighter coming in, just basically a, a straight line, no wandering. Um, went inside. Mordecai noticed that there were a little kind of boot tracks on the ground with a little tiny bit of mud. Comes back out. You can tell that this person was probably holding both kegs and walking quite slow. Um, you can tell by the, the pacing is different of the footprints. And they get to the, there's sort of a backyard, there's chickens and stuff. And he gets to the gate, opens the gate, and there was something with wheels that had come and gone with this, the footprints and the kegs, presumably. Um, it's kind of like an alley behind there. Duke, you you weren't expecting any orders or anything, were you? It, is, was there anything coming in? Uh, I mean, we got the we got the new beer. We were supposed to get a Jamdrian order, honestly, and it's a week late. I don't. It's, I feel like they're they're off doing something really important and can't bring me my jam right now, which is fine. I still have enough for the toast, but you know, I I feel like Ranger would have barked if if somebody just came in and grabbed them or something. That is strange. But the indications are that they must have been somebody familiar and used to coming in and out because these are very deliberate tracks uh if it's somebody who has not been to a place before they'll be a little wandering around uh, so who's strong enough to carry both of the eggs besides me who's around a lot regular hmm. duke goes hmm that's that's a good question uh there's there's Wilda. She's, uh, you know, half giant. She's mm. doesn't drink though. So that would be weird. Um, she's, she's not much of a drinker. Uh, there's Olwyn. Prefers scotch, but maybe would steal some kegs. But I, I thought he was, um, I thought he was out on an adventure up in the mountains somewhere. But, and there's also, uh, gray who could pretty easily take those kegs but he was part of the party that left this morning when did the kegs go missing 
well, they were here last night and, uh, you know, I, when I got here, Ella wasn't here. So I had to do all the dishes, mop the front, everything, you know, it's just not like her to flake. I haven't known her so long, but I didn't think that she'd just disappear. I'm worried about her, but you know, I didn't notice probably till after the first rush, after dinner rush. Well, well I think so all these people are worth looking into. What do you guys think? I agree. So you said Gray was part of the party that left this morning. Was Gray here last night? Oh, yeah. Um, and you guys would have seen that party. You see them regularly sitting around a table talking about adventures. You heard them talking about, um, do you actually overheard a conversation the previous night? Um, roll a memory check. Roll a per Everybody roll a perception check to see how much of that conversation you remember. Because they were sitting at the table next to you and Duke was about to come refill your drinks. So. Well, oh, I, I don't remember much. Yeah, I, I rolled an eight. I was probably on, on a number of glasses by then. Mm. So Shelby, not a gossip. Not going to be listening. Actually, if it's, if it's perception, I, I actually would have done better than that. So uh, sorry. That's okay. 15. Oh, 15 is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I clearly was not paying attention at all. So, like, um, Shelby. <laughs> yeah, I think that you two were probably having a, uh, a lively debate about the, um, the best way to make Duke actually laugh and which is very challenging. Um, and weren't paying attention, but Shelby sitting back and just kind of listening as, you know, taking everything in, uh, heard Duke talking to them and said, oh, hey, you, you, uh, you guys are next on the rotation. I've got some kobolds that I need you to clear out. And you know that you're in the rotation too. Basically when a, somebody comes into the bar and says, hey, Duke, I need help. He's got his list of adventures and he goes through it and makes sure that everybody kind of gets a chance at leveling up and getting experience but if something's not going to work for some people he'll kind of swap it in and out he's sort of the the adventure scheduler of the town mm -hmm. uh and and is very good at it um and it's part of why this town runs so smoothly so, so it is is gray one of the regal stallions yes oh okay i'm sorry i i yeah sorry i don't think i actually yeah. said that um but yes gray is one of the regal stallions uh, there is also Zay and Zoe. Those are the three regal stallions that are currently missing. Hmm. And um, Shelby, you remember overhearing Duke giving them this, you know, you know them as adventurers. You probably have teamed up a couple times. Um, they're not incompetent. They're pretty strong. Um, and kobolds shouldn't be you know, that's get back by noon kind of adventure, you know, not well after dinner. Mm. Mm. Well, I think uh, so, we should go follow this lead. So. So I'm should sure. we go try and clear out the cobalt or do we want to look into the wheels or we think it's all the same? What? Because if Ella, Ella disappeared last night, yeah, because we said she hadn't put her apron on. Right. Yeah. Do you right. suppose she went along with them trying to be an adventurer? I think adventuring is a lot of fun. Do Duke nods and agrees and goes, I don't see her being the adventuring type, though. She She likes to be comfortable and she's much smarter she's very smart and she likes to be comfortable she likes a nice cozy tavern some friendly conversation i don't see her throwing herself in a den of kobolds maybe i'm wrong I don't know. Hmm. so where can we find all of the, the other people where where would wilda and olwyn be in case we need to talk to them uh, you know where they, they have their, you know, where their houses are. Um, and 
you know that, or Duke is able to tell you that the kobold den that he was referencing uh, was down by the lake. Oh. Which you, all right, you so... all know is just a local kind of watering hole. Um, there's a forest, but it's, it's to the s- southwest. There's kind of a forested area that's pretty dense. Sometimes there's fey in there. It's, it's not super safe. Sounds like home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's uh, probably so the... the route you take into town, usually, Shelby, because the, the path cuts around it, but you probably just wander through the trees. Um, and then below that, there's a kind of a beautiful lake and reflects the moonlight. And uh, that those are kind of the general areas. Well, so we know that the regal stallions are at the lake. Uh, mm-hmm. The wild stallions are at San Dimas. Um, I wonder where. Did I say that Wilda? We was should a half just, giant? just go see if she's sick. Yeah, you did. She's a she's a half giant who doesn't drink. Yeah, we can stop by her house on our way to the Cobalt then. Just yeah, like, she, okay. she just may be sick and didn't come in. So okay, yeah. Um, I will flit rooftop to rooftop as they walk. Yeah. Uh, roll a perception check. As you I can do that. Back. Actually, everybody roll a perception check as you step out of the bar. You see Ranger gives you hearty sniffs. Duke gives you a hearty thank you for essentially accepting any number of quests in one go. Uh, you know he'll be good for it, whatever comes of you know, but it's, it's usually he's got like his ledger and he has these little sachets of gold for you. And it's all a procedure, but Duke is a little I, frazzled. Uh, I did figure out how to make him laugh though. We're going oh. to make him a hat that has an exclamation mark on the top. <laughs> it, it uh, It's enchanted. So it lights up and there's a little metal coil. So it's on a spring. Mm-hmm. And so and and um, he acts like he he's like you goofers, but you definitely have seen him after hours with it on while he's like cleaning glasses, just chuckling to himself. <laughs> That's the best. Yes. So to Ella's house, we go. Excellent. And you roll perceptions. And um, I did poorly. Uh, before we go, I'd like to distribute good berries to everybody. Ooh. So um, I will uh, hand out. There's three of us, so everyone gets three, and I will have four. Um, so go ahead. Oh, thank go ahead you, and Shelby. That with you. Your berries are always the best. I'm glad you like them. Oh. We ought to go along with you when you forage sometime. Okay. Julia, what was your perception roll? Uh, Me? 21. Oh, did you say Julia or Larry? I, I said Julia. What was Larry's? Oh, 11. I'm aware that there's a, uh, a street. The sun is setting. It's beautiful. It's, <sighs> it's, it's that peachy, teal, blue sky. Um, mm. It is a clear night, full moon. You are approaching, uh, Ella's, Ella's, she's got a very humble little kind of studio cottage um, that's very close to Duke's Tavern. And she, uh, as you approach, you notice with a 21, you notice all of her shades are drawn and um, it doesn't look like there's any lights on and there's no movement. It seems very, very still. Mm. I go up and just knock gently on her door. Okay. A couple of moments pass and no response. <sighs> hmm. That was a pointless dramatic gasp, but you know. Just, 
I'm wondering if I can, can I face step through a door or does it need to be unoccupied space? Good question. Um, uh, it should say whether or not you need to be able to see your destination. It's misty step, right? Yeah, oh, face step. Um, it doesn't say I need to see through it. Have you tried the door handle? I'm like halfway through casting. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I tried the door handle. It's open. <laughs> oh, thank you. It is unlocked. There's glow around Mary's hands, and her eyes are starting to glow. And then she goes, oh, and just door handle. Try before you pry. <laughs> this is why we pay you the big bucks. And I hand him a pickle. <laughs> I'll snap it out of the air. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I got big pickle energy now. <laughs> <laughs> so the door creaks open with that joke from Straker. Oh. And it's dark inside and it's quiet. Uh, and looking in, you see a little studio cottage and the shades are all drawn and very dark um you see her little kitchenette area her table and um her bed and kind of a, a bed pad on the floor at the foot of the bed like a dog bed uh and then a big chest where you can keep your clothes or whatever um and it's it's it looks like a very normal cottage for the area, humble furnishings, but no no life to be seen. And I'll I'll have the feet clenched on the roof and hanging down with the head looking into the doorway, and go. Well, we know she's very tidy. Has the bed been made? Um, we look at the bed. Yeah, it ha it is it is made. Hmm. Okay. That indicates that she didn't get home last night. I say we go check out this cobalt den. I I feel like if we find the cakes, we find Ella, and I'm a little worried why both of them are in the same place. Maybe. And if not, at least we have the forest. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Shelby, you've had experience with, uh, now winding up uh, adopting the accent. Um, well, Shelby, you've got experience with, uh, with kobolds, Are you making yeah? fun of me? No, never. It's part of how I learn languages. He's actually got a okay. special need in dialects. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, what did you ask me? <laughs> uh, it, just a just a question about kobolds, don't you know? Uh, hey, you've got experience with the kobolds, yeah? Ah, uh, do I? I mean, are they mean or are they nice? I don't. I don't yeah, you. Yeah, I don't you know. All would have this fought is... them before. It's kind of like oh, going. You know, it's it's sort of the basic adventure. They keep coming. They're an invasive species. They just keep coming back and there's dens of them every once in a while and they yeah. will they will eat all of the the farmers livestock and try to steal you know pets out of the yard if you don't kind of keep them away yeah you see people. over in town i know a bunch of really good kobolds and they can be good friends and they're great informants and everything but oh yeah no uh, no no different kind yeah. of cob i mean <laughs> You, These guys are the dickhead tribe, apparently. So, well, they're sort of uh, they're sort of feral kobolds. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's the guys in town, very very smart. They're different. We need to come up with a better way to refer to the the cave the cave lizards. Uh, they want to differentiate themselves from their uh, uneducated, unsophisticated brethren. Yeah, the um the the educated one are actually called Drakbolds. Drakbolds. 
<laughs> yeah, just and so like Duke, he's like a grown up drag bull. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the rest are fun sized. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know that these these are more like a creature. They're not like the the kobold uh, race of of adventurers that you might encounter, which you might encounter. But they're yeah similar but different. Right. These are the the uh, the rather terrible ones. All right. All right. Well, you know, I thought that maybe they'd had the idea of, oh, maybe we can just buy these kobolds off by taking them a, a cask of brew, but nah, these wouldn't be the type, would they? Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, Shelby, you're, you're, you're a tracker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to follow you. And by we, I mean me, but volunteering... Mary, Mary Mordecai. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, I guess just to start, we're tracking. I mean, um, we know where the cobalts are, right? They're you know down where by the, the cobalt den is. There are cart tracks that you could decide to follow, and then um, you could see if you could find the regal stallions, like boot prints, on the way out for their adventure. Um, it's not a hugely populated town, so you might still be able to get their tracks. Um, or you do know where the kobold den is. It's at the moonlit pond, which is uh, through the trees, which is technically called the quiet bark forest, but everybody just calls it the trees. <sighs> well, we'll take the scenic route. We'll go explore the uh, forest, the trees, and we'll, we'll be on our way. Okay. That's Great. strange. My intuition isn't telling me that there's a, a huge urgency on this. I mean, well, I hope Ella's I'm right. Ella's missing, so if we think that Ella might be in trouble, there's something fairly urgent. Oh, yeah, I'd yeah. Say. Yeah, going I, through the forest is probably both the then, scenic route and the fastest route. We have our friends who are missing too, bit. so I think we're in a rush a bit. Yeah. That's fair. I'll fly ahead and scout. I'll return and report. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So, spread your wings. I am. Um, a no. I'm trying to keep time to know because we're going to take a little bit of a break, but probably another like 10, 15 minutes. All right. Um, so roll a perception check with advantage from your flight from being All able right. to see down into the forest. And it is getting dark. I'm guessing our bird friend has dark vision. Fearbold? Fearbold? Uh, I do not, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's an 18 for me. Ooh, I okay. should have... I I have dark vision. Um, yeah, and I can see up to 60 feet. But if uh, uh, Shelby can't, I'll just uh, press to digitate some lights and stuff. Great. So you come to the edge of the forest, uh, the trees, and Straker spreads his wings. Cree! I don't know what you can, I don't know what the correct noise is, but uh, looking down, you see a family of brown bears. Nice. Uh, you see you see a wolf, a really big wolf. That's Ooh. kind of they're sort of they're not they're definitely not close to each other. And you see um, the telltale sign of the regal stallions they're normal through the tra through the the forest trail that they ride because they have horses so right. they ride on this one specific trail and you see that there are recent horse poops uh and you know that they have been here probably within the last day all right uh out of curiosity any spot of that uh, single axle i think it was wagon no. tracks that we saw earlier no wagon tracks. Hmm. And I will just 
bank to the left and come on back to our, my friends. And I will swoop up, careful not to put any dust in their face uh, faces, and uh, say, well, we've got bear family that way. Uh, we've got a very large wolf that way. Uh, and we've got the usual uh, trail of horse-induced destruction caused by the regal stallions. Well, maybe we should take the same trail as the regal stallions. If they can make it through here, then maybe we can take that same path. It's easy to follow. Okay. What do you think, Shelby? Or, uh, I think that's fine. I trust you all. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. <laughs> We're all in this together. Uh, we'll all flee at the same speed. It's good. <laughs> Excellent. As as Straker says, we're all in this together. You step into the silhouetted spooky trees and an owl calls in the distance and a bat flies by. It's a little spooky, it's a little spooky. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's probably mostly not haunted. Tell it's the rare, owl. It's a rarely haunted forest, so. Tell the owl, I've got your candy pop. I'll get it to you on the way back. <laughs> he doesn't want to <laughs> candy pop. Um, so you move through the forest and everybody give me a perception check. Yay. Dirty 20 again. Man, D&D &D digital dice are usually not this kind. <laughs> the other shoe's going to drop soon. Yeah, I'm not so good at all. Um, I'm just... No, I'm I'm ready. I'm willing. I've got my eyes open. Wow, a branch. Okay. And yeah. I'm a 14. 14? Okay. Um, so Shelby, you definitely hear some normal animal rustling of the forest. You're probably not too put off by it because it's pretty normal animal rustling. Mary, you see that Mistopheles metaphorically puts his hackles up. He's like. Something's, something, something's out there. And you can tell he has spotted something in the woods that you cannot see. It's beyond your uh, vision. Okay. But if you tell, uh, yeah. I'm going to kind of stop in my tracks then and kind of like, you know, pointedly look at everyone. I'll go, Shelby, he's, uh, Mordecai's a little nervous. Can you, I don't know what goes into tracking, but do you have any idea of what might be up ahead? Um, can I, can I tell anything about what's up ahead? I think with, because it's with Mary's light, you would have to go kind of move in that direction to be able to tell more because it's pretty dark, you see shadows. It looks like there is there is movement, but it's far, it's just right on the edge of your vision. Okay. Um, let's... And you couldn't see what was up ahead, right, Straker? I couldn't, but I have an idea. Okay. Okay. And I'll point in that direction and go, hey, you! That works. It seems like a solid plan. Yeah. Hey, you ahead. And as are you... <laughs> are you going to attack us? Because we don't want that. Please be nice. So this, this echoes of shouts through the forest and you see a very large wolf Damn. turns its head and looks back at you. You see the eyes reflecting in the darkness and then takes off. And as you watch it sort of flee from you, you hear behind you some low growling. Right. I'd well, like to cast speak with animals, please. 
Yeah, and I want to do what you always do when you see a wolf give you respect and go. (laughs) So it has you. You know what? Do an insight check. I shall do that. The wolf. The wolf. The fleeing wolf wolf that you talked to. The wolf is on fire. Okay. And the dice say. Twenty two. That was not respect. That was not aggression. That was pure fear in that wolf's eyes. That wolf saw the three of you and was terrified and ran away as fast as it could. Oh, hey, we scared a big wolf. That's not nice. Yeah. Proud about that? That's not a nice thing to do. Well, but it makes me feel good about myself. You know, normally I'm about a two crunch creature and uh, that's a wolf to act scared. Well, okay, honestly, I don't think it was me. Actually, I think it was scared of you. I just think it's of a nervous disposition. I did hear a growl, though. It's weird. We just came the, from the bar. Didn't we just eat? Uh, there's a growl behind us, but I don't want to look around. As, you're, as you say, there's a growl. You actually hear a great creaking sound as well. Is anybody going to turn around? Mm-hmm. No, because then it will be real. Shall we, I want to know. I'm curious about what's here. Yeah. So you turn around and are faced with two brown bears that look like they have just sort of come up upon you and you turned around just kind of right before they snuck up and attacked. Oh, hello there. Uh, what you doing? Looks like what? fun. Uh, we're supposed to kill you. Oh, why? I don't know. And he like rears at you. <laughs> Roll initiative. Ah! <laughs> but I'm like this, at this point just kind of slowly looking around. Bears. It's bears. It's always <laughs> bears. Bears. Oh my god, it's Gail Simone. Okay. Um <laughs> uh 14 initiative. Okay. Initiative. I'm an 11 initiative. Wow. A five. I'm I'm really representing the avians tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I just you're just looking around everywhere. But never in the place you need to be. That's you know, that's it. I'm gathering valid information, just not in the correct direction. Mm Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, just wait for the other perception checks. You're going to be right on. I believe you. <laughs> you can heal, right? Okay. Um, I, I hope so. Yeah. Necromancer, as you said, is a healer that just takes it a little far. Yeah, the healer that never gives up is a necromancer. That's right. Uh, what is your deck, Straker? Uh, my dex is actually pretty darned good. Oh. Um, I have a total of a plus six. Perfect. All right. So you <clears throat> turn around. You see this bear sort of lunging so at you. They wouldn't parlay with us at all. Like he seemed wouldn't. uncomfortable because, like you, you walk through these woods all the time, talking to the mm-hmm. bear. It seemed like he might have been charmed or compelled in some way Mm. um that is not he's it's unusual aggression and so as you turn around um they oops i did that backwards actually you know what you turn around bear is leaping behind the bear you all see two of the trees that creaking sound pulling their roots up out of the ground and flexing their limbs. And they look to be not super far away, but 
a little bit away, uh, definitely not as close as these bears. And in that freeze frame, we're going to take a 10 minute break. A little bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, so actually, I don't know if Gray is, uh, we've got our geek in the van, Gray. Thank you so much, Gray. He's uh, such a good Gray. So wonderful. Um, I am going to. I thought, you were, I thought you were off dealing with kobolds. Yeah. And he's such so a regal so stallion. <laughs> he's a, normally, he's a pretty prancing pony, but now. <laughs> He can He's also be one of the, stallion. and then, and then if they they get their airborne brigade going, they have the regal eagles. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm with them. We fly yeah. formations for. Parades. And when they're when they're lawyers, they're the legal regal eagles. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here for it. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a fun time with yes. It's good. Uh, so well, I. Gray, play us out. We'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to say, too, Gray, if you can figure out how to talk over the starting soon, you could tell people a little bit about GDG. I would do it, but I really need to cool off. Oh, it's Duke. <laughs> Are we good to take break? All right, while they're gone, um, I'm just going to narrate here, and uh, you can see we have 66,000. Of course you can hear me and not see me. That's because I don't want to be seen. I don't want to mess up my thing. You'll just have to deal with just the hearing. Pretend like that, uh, that, that regal person right there is the, is the person that is talking to you. And you can see we have $66,893. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, we have to delete that guy. Oh, well, that's too bad. And... Doo, 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 doo. Yep. There we go. So, any questions people have? Feel free to ask. I wish I could figure out how to delete this person's message here. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, it's so hard to do. Hmm. <laughs> This is what happens when you're not usually a person who does the modding. We can make this interactive. I think. All right, well, I know that there are mods in here, so if there are mods who happen to know how to, within OBS, um, change the chat things, that would be great. I definitely have not figured that out. I'm supposed to be talking about the uh, whole fundraiser and things, but... That doesn't seem to be happening either. How long is the fundraiser going on? Glad you asked, Incarnadine. That's actually kind of cool. Um, so because of the fact that um, the way that... Uh, hey, Gray, if you give me more privileges, I can delete those accountably. I would love to do that. Actually, Scoys can do it, so that way you don't have to. Mod. All right. 
that should do it. Unfortunately, it did. Ah, I spelled his name wrong. Mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> um, fundraiser will end on Monday at midnight Pacific time so that uh, Jen and uh, her friends can all go bid on things at the very last minute. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Scoys, there you go. Now you know how gullible I am. <clears throat> Good thing I like you. Uh. You did. I appreciate that you deleted it, and I appreciate that help. Uh, it's going to be a long weekend of streaming, so that's going to be, uh, this, is, this is just the beginning of it. <laughs> dangerous moderator powers. You know, of all the dangerous people I can think of moderating, I think that Scoys is not someone I'm, I'm uh, terribly scared of. Uh, now, Larry, if Larry was uh, trying to moderate, I don't know if I could give him those kinds of privileges, because... You know, he has a, a reputation that he re revels in. Um, mostly harmless. Yeah. Good people, yes. However, good people can still have reputations. Uh, we appreciate that you're all here, by the way. Um, there's going to be more streams coming this weekend. We have tomorrow at 11, we have Thaddeus Howes, the Answer Man, and Dao Wong, who is a lit RPG author talking about comics so you know we like having games we like having literary stuff we haven't had a lot of comics so we're going to have them on tomorrow then at 2 p.m jamie and sky Fay cosplay who some of you know will be talking having a uh, cosplay fashion show which will include the debut of a sword video that um, we are calling the caesuriad uh, which is a the journey of caesura through Oh, several different versions of cosplay. Um, and then in the evening, we are having a panel on uh, queerness and kink in speculative fiction, which will feature um, Jeffy Kennedy, who is an author and the um, president-elect of SIFWA, and also uh, Midori, who is a sexuality educator from San Francisco, and um, Dana Pelabon, who is a uh, playwright, uh, performer, and also happens to be on the World Builders Board of Directors. Um, and then, wait, wait, there's more. On Sunday, we'll be back here for more D&D with uh, World Builders and Friends with this guest DM, who I'm a little nervous about. This guy named Saucefire is going to be taking us on an adventure. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and it should be quite, quite a fun time. Yes, the Mighty Sauce. <laughs> Please pass the Mighty Sauce. The only way that, ah, look at that. We're so close, $66,903. We are closing in on 67,000. And um, I believe that those particular, um, Cards are still available. Let's see if that is true. Mm. Did anyone make a guess as to what the most popular item has been for the whole uh, the whole fundraiser? The thing that people have claimed the most of? Is it the Aeolian glasses? Is it the... I'll give you a hint. Both of them are not of this earth. Uh, happily, they both are related to some of our favorite people, such as Shire Post Mint, and we'd like to think that um, the fact that we had Lady Astronaut Club also involved. The Harvest Moon Brass Coin is the most popular item we have, and closely followed by the Murderbot Pins. It's the only place we can... Only place you can get them is from us. Bail money card. Ha. Huh. Yeah, the, the get out of jail free card. Is that, uh, that what you're looking for? If you want that, you've got to get the whole pack of cards. That, that's 
Yes, that's true. Jen, what was uh, was what was your um, card for that set? Do you remember? Uh, I know it was a. I think it was a Nugget to rework uh, something. I can look it up. Give me a second. Mm. I want to get it right. And if I remember right, for this one, the new one, you did um, um, Alindra's hut. Was that it? Alindra's accommodating abode. Yes. Okay. Yes. It gives you a free use of uh, basically of using Leonin's tiny hut as a safe space to uh, to rest for the evening. <coughs> um, yeah, Alindra is the character I play on Heroes Plains and have played on all of the various incarnations of that show. Um, you can also play her. She's a playable champion and idol champions of the Forgotten Realms, which is a video game. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, for the card, it was. Oh no, that was. Uh, um, I'm going to gracefully transition the appearance of people back, if that's okay, since you all seem to be nicely framed. We can still talk. Yeah. Well, that seems lovely. I can tell you that I uh, there have been times that I wish that I could take out uh, um, a Linder's abode and you know play it for real because there are times when you need a safe space in the middle of everybody. The day. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yes, um, Sanctuary Moon T-shirt. Somebody found the Sanctuary Moon T-shirt. Sorry, give me a free go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I I think what I ended up doing was make uh, make your fantasy better than our reality. And so the use was you could make one permanent change to the world in game uh, that enhances the accessibility or inclusiveness of your world. So it could be anything from either adding ramps or having something that is easily translated into another language uh, to having uh, all sheets in this world being enchanted to magically fold at a chosen time so all beds make themselves because uh, it makes your life a little bit easier. Or thanks to Kimball the Overbandage, the great library's books all have pages whose edges are gently rounded and won't cause paper cuts. Um, uh, so that's just as easy as no one thinks twice about, you know, using someone's pronouns or, uh, you know, the wizard's tower has an elevating platform on the east side right next to the garden. So, uh, yeah, those are those are the kinds of ideas of what you can do with my card. Uh, I love it. At some point, Kimball the Overbandage needs to show up in my game. I keep keep thinking about that. And <laughs> I, I think I wrote that email at, you know, three in the morning or something, four in the morning. <laughs> and it was, yeah, I, oh, no, that, that was in the evening. But I, yeah, I was working on Candlekeep at that point, too. I had a deadline. And uh, yeah, I was a little loopy as I, mean, I was writing. That's the best stuff, though. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, Kimball the Overbandage. I got to go put that back in my in my game notes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that kind of, of sleep-deprived loopiness is what every game with Saucefire is like, by the way. Really? So you've got that to look forward to. Yeah, that's my every Monday night, guys, so I just... You'll have a good time. I'm, I'm almost <laughs> positive Gray is our geek in the van on Sunday, uh, but say and Zoe are playing, so that, nice. that party is sort of a, a multiverse nod to whatever Saucefire gets them up to. I have no idea what their plan is, but... Regal uh, Stallion's the game. The Regal Stallion. <laughs> Regal Stallion. Regal Stallion in the van? I had much crowded yep. van, so. Regal <laughs> The Fire funny Fire. thing about you saying the Regal Eagles was I originally was gonna call them Eagles, and I was like, oh, there's an Eric Hawker in the party. We've, we've got a bird focus. Let me think of another animal, horse. The regal horse. That sounds dumb. The regal stallions. Well, <laughs> they're the going, number three cover band for the wild stallions. Yeah. I mean, not every adventuring party is going to have a super slick name. <laughs> it's fair. Oh, it's <laughs> absolutely I, true. I got Misty a wild stallions uh, hockey jersey. Yeah, she digs that. Yeah. I will. Our, uh, just the last comment, uh, our in-game sauce fire, we named our group uh, the Sexy Kraken. So definitely not always going to be winners, but I did design like a hockey t-shirt that said that, where it's like, one day when we meet up in person, we will all just wear these. 
Nice. My players were uh, have have a band called Lute- uh, Luteus Maximus, and then one of them did a logo design. It was a whole thing. So Luteus Maximus is a uh, my last my last delightful. group that I DM'd had a um, they had a robotic badger pet named Benny. So they were Benny and the Jets. Yeah, I, I actually know Sir Mix a lot, so I can imagine what the graphic for Luteus Max would look like. It, Luteus Maximus is really extraordinary. Yeah, it's, 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 like it's gorgeous. Double, double bubble loot. Double loots with the yeah. things. Yeah, the the necks of the loot stick. It was yeah. a plus. Luke that group did so much curfew. amazing graphic design. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even tell you. Um, Larry, next year you'll have to get Sir Mix a lot to come play D anD D with us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> he likes high rolls and he cannot lie. Um, <laughs> All right, if we are good to get started, Gray, we got our plugs in. We, Everybody yep. got their waters and their breathing breaks in. Yeah. Excellent. We're all good. Back to you, Jamie. And the bear. <gasps> oh. Pounces. Oh. It was actually great because the, uh, the bear rolled the highest initiative, so... Well, how is that great so for as any a of us? Free, free action, not mm-hmm. an initiative. May um, I? I have speech of beast and leaf um, as a fearbulk, which mm-hmm. means I can communicate with, with the trees. Um, excuse me, do you mind helping us out? This is a, it's a bit of a strange situation. I can't help but notice there that you've got your roots coming up and, uh, you know, there's no reason for violence here. We can just talk this out, hang out maybe have have a drink around a fire it's gonna be a lovely evening so so maybe you could help us out instead of uh uh hitting us the um <clears throat> trees as they they slowly creep towards you they hear you hear the reply oh i would love a drink but oh I, i've got a water skin here somewhere and i i grab a water skin and i kind of would, would you like me to? But we've got this issue of these bears that are, uh, I mean, you're welcome to some too. He go, he's, oh, well, the problem is those bears and my friend and I here ran into the, uh, the same person. And you see that they're lumbering towards you very slowly, but kind of aggressively uh but you know who again he's he say, oh i want to drink but sorry i have to punch you is is the vibe you get from these trees well i see see i don't like people compelling others to do things like that so yeah you get the sense that you might be able to do something to break this that it is not like a fully um because they're expressing this kind of hesitance, whatever was cast is not like full mind control. And you you might be able to figure out a way to snap them out of it. The bears are going to roll to attack. They are both going to attack Shelby because she was standing uh, or turned to them. Let's see. Oh, that's a four, not great. No, that won't that won't do much here. No. You get one kind of bites at your ankles, and you just sort of go move your foot. <laughs> totally fine. You miss uh, the bite and the claw for the first one. Miss. I'm afraid your bites be harder. <laughs> yeah, he he bites pretty hard. Uh, but unfortunately, as you dodge out of the way, the second one gets a critical bite on you oh. gets you right in the the thigh meat wow that's not very nice at all it's you know so they do oh 14 damage ah! okay well thanks for coming everybody uh <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the show I... a, oh, that was no, a cr- I'm, I'm i'm all right i'm all right that's all right. Yeah. We, you know, it was a big chunk out of your leg, but you, you work with animals all the time. Sometimes they're a little feisty. Mm, it's uh, cool. It's cool. 
misses on the clause as well. Uh, so we move to Mary. You see behind, I'm, behind you there is Shelby, two bears, and then behind the bears by a bit, there are these awakened trees. Shelby and two bears. So what I'll do um, is my action, then I'll have Mordecai go do something as well. Um, I'm going to use my uh, charm uh, spell to try to counteract on the bears. Mm, okay. Um, so they need to make a, um, ooh, and if I do it at a higher spell slot, uh, I get to do it on two additional targets. So as long as they're within 30 feet of each other. So if I can do it on both the bears and a tree. Yep. Okay. Um, so they all need to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, you know, I don't think the, I mean, the bears are a little wise. The trees, I don't think are uh, very wise. We've all adopted the Fargo accent, I noticed. <laughs> Just all pick it up. Um, so the bears succeeded, the trees failed. Okay. So you see the tree in the back sort of creaks to a halt. And it doesn't look like he's going to start fighting for you right away, like Shelby had, had requested, but he's reconsidering his attack. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with Mordecai, since he was already carrying my water skin inside of him, uh, I'm just going to have him run to, it's like the lake or the pond that was in this area, like anywhere nearby. It's... Yeah, it's probably kind of just over the hill. It's not super far, but it'll take him a couple turns to go and come back if you want Mordecai to go there and come back. It'll probably take him, I mean, it would probably take him a minute, which is a really long time in combat. Yeah, for sure. So I'll have him go do that and then bring water back for the trees. Oh, okay. He's, he's not uh, muscly per se, so he can't like do attacks. So <laughs> he'll go do that. He's off to fetch some water, the water goes. All right. And then what does Mary do? Um, well, I think the, the charm person was my act. Oh, that, sorry. It, it, it's okay. And then um, what I'm gonna do is kind of just stand uh, kind of behind a, a non-animated tree <laughs> and just wait it out and then be able to be like, hey, trees, we're not, please help. <laughs> so there's this very, very pale creature in the moonlight, a half face peeking out of the tree. <laughs> and even you guys know it's Mary, just the sweetest little necromancer, but it, it's a little spooky of a vibe peeking around the trees. Shelby. All right, here. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, um, cast, uh, uh, one thing here. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, and, uh, turn myself into a, a, a bear here. Oh. Uh, so, so. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So Shelby, uh, Shelby just sort of, I almost don't shrink much because I'm already pretty big. So I'm gonna just kind of get wider and a little bit furrier and I'm I'm gonna grow a, a set of claws and some teeth. And uh, now I sound like I'm from New York. I don't know why. It's, um, it's because I'm a bear now. So when I'm a bear now, I, I, I talk like awesome. this apparently. So I'm gonna fight now. Uh, so I'm going to be in my bear form, and I'm going to go around the side. Awesome. And I'm going to roar. You're going to roar. I'm going to roar. All right. Straker. Straker. All right. Uh, momentary dramatic pose. And then um, I will use athletics to leap upward and over and come in behind the bears, of which there is an increasingly large number, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it when Shelby does that, actually. 
You really can definitely cool. tell which one is Shelby. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, because I'm standing in between the two of you, the, the set of you, and I'm trying to get this to not be a fight because I don't want us to fight. We shouldn't fight. We don't need to hit anybody here. That's just right. And so I'm making sure that just in case I've got flanking, should it be needed, and I'm uh, drawing out uh, my cable and going defensive. Okay. All right. So you want to describe your weapon to the to the audience? It's, it's got a uh, it's got a large ring on one end uh, that that opens up kind of like a safety snap, um, and the rest of it is a silvery cable, and it's got a uh, a T handle on the other end, and this is this is his specialty martial arts weapon. Um, which hopefully we won't have to use, um, because I don't want I don't want to hit bears, but I also don't want to be hit by bears. It's a so way to feel about this. Yeah, it's just one of those life things. Um, so as their interaction is going on, I'm there to support it. Okay. You know. Do you Don't, want to hold uh, an action? I want to hold an action, and uh, I will go for a trip action if there is another attack on any of us. Okay. You're, you're going to sweep the leg if you see any of them lunge again. <laughs> I will do it. Wonderful. All right. So that brings us to the trees who are going to sort of slow their pace. Uh, but they're going to keep walking towards you. And they were about 60 feet away, and they only have about 20 feet of movement. Um, but you can tell they're ambling now. <sighs> they're not, you know, they, they're, their leaves are all very relaxed. And uh, Shelby, you can probably tell that the, their, their tree body language is that of curiosity and slight concern. They are not aggressive anymore. Okay, good. So it seems like so, something something worked in there. And then good. it's the bears. And the bears, the first one, is going to The try, bears. The bears is going to try to punch. Let's see. Mary's behind a tree. I am standing in between them and everyone else. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very overtly yeah. making myself a meat shield here. And they are, you can tell that they are not fighting tactically. They're almost like windmill arms. It's, okay. It's, so one just sort of comes up at you and, <laughs> big bear friends. <laughs> uh, After they critted on me. <laughs> <laughs> so roll a, um, let's do a dex for uh, Straker. And we will see if you can sweep the leg because you held the, that action. Oh, we can't hear you, Larry. Oh, oh sorry. It, it, I didn't know if you were playing. That's all right. I had a character sheet that was not cooperating for a moment. Um, all my problem, I promise you, it was not D&D Beyond's problem. Uh, so you would like, what, a um, a straight-up dex check? Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a dex contest. With ah, I see. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing if you are, if... Who has the more stable footing? I have rolled a 19. Well, the bear does not have great footing. So as you, as it lunges forward, uh, you know, Shelby's there, stop. And Straker just kind of gets real low and with a leg kick, kicks out that's up this bear's leg and he just face plants on the ground. Folded bear. It just a flat on his face. Can't, can't do anything, he's prone. There you go. All right, and the other one is going to give a half-hearted roar and swing on Shelby. <laughs> did, did anything change in the attitude of the bear that got knocked prone? I don't know that you can tell yet. I mean, okay. he got hit by a planet. 
We've got, and, oh, no, he does hit on the claws. So, Whoa. Shelby gets a claw, but it's not a crit this time. Not going to hurt nearly as bad. So, that is 12. Uh, 12 points of damage? Yes, 12 points of damage. Holy balls. Shelby's, Shelby's pretty hardy. There's a reason that you hang out with Shelby, and it's that things generally hit Shelby instead of you. And also, Shelby has a bunch of ways, like, Wild Shape lets you take damage. Basically, you have soak points on damage. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So, I exist. I exist to... I'm here to take the hits so we don't have to punch anyone. Right. And Jamie, I want to... Jamie, I want to hear the half-hearted roar. Uh, <laughs> See, that's right. That that's pretty right. much sums up the season right there. Well, you've fulfilled what you were asked to do. You've come in. You've attacked us. We've had the conversation. Now are we good? All right, Mary, it's your turn. Um, You're behind a tree. Yeah, I'm behind There's a- one bear that is comically splayed out face first, and one just took a pretty small chunk out of out of Shelby. It was not a really bad hit. Okay, so the one that uh, chomped on Shelby, I'm gonna try to charm at level one. Um, okay. So again, just wisdom. Okay. Oh, rolled an eighteen. Um. Oh, is it you rolling, or did I roll a defense? Oh, no, you need to roll a yeah. wisdom save for the bear. Bear got an 18, has no bonus wisdom, but rolled pretty well. Okay, so I kind of shout out from behind a tree, like, please stop fighting, we really we really don't want to fight you. Oh, okay, he's not hearing what I, okay. And then I shout back at Mordecai, like, please bring the water faster. <laughs> and um, Shelby. Yep. If you're, yeah. Okay. Um, so did they seem to react to the uh... the one that is flat on the ground? Mm-hmm. Roll an insight check with advantage because you are also a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the line of the night. <laughs> uh, Twenty-two. Oh, Ooh. he. He got the wind knocked right out of him. He's just, you know, he's probably not going to be fighting for a while, whether he's peeled or not. And how about his buddy there? Just going to tap out. He still looks a little peeved, but he's just not going to, you know, you you feel like he's losing steam. I want to take a shove action on the buddy. Just to try and say, okay, buddy, not do damage, just knock him prone. Okay, yeah. So that would be his strength versus mine, I believe. Okay. His strength versus my attack, my, my strength attack, which is going to be as a bear. Uh, it's going to be a bear. So, so it's going to be a 25. Oh, yeah. So this bear seems to like kind of dig his feet in as you're like, whoa, there, buddy. But you just have the the advantage. Oh, oh buddy, over. oh pal, we've got to we've got to stop this. Okay, you've you've achieved what you needed to achieve. We're here now, so can we please talk? Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he trips on on his prone friend, uh, and you hear him go. Oh. <clears throat> and oh, both okay, everybody feeling okay room. now. Everybody feeling back to themselves now. Yeah. And yeah. you get the sense that you're out of initiative. They're not okay. uh, scrambling at you, and the trees uh, come up behind you, and one of them actually sort of puts a branch around you and says, "My friend, thank you." That was and I, I shape shift back into myself. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, friend. You're I welcome. see the I see the tree hug, and I'm actually yeah. going to stand up and go, "Oh, <laughs> the tree tree hugging." Oh. Um, there was a uh, st- 
strange young woman who ran through the forest. She seemed quite desperate. When we tried to help her, she said to leave her alone. And we said, what is wrong? And she said, go away. And the bears came over and they tried to help, but they're bears. She doesn't speak bear. So she got really scared. And I think that's why she cast the spell on us, but she's not great at it, so. Which way did she run? Uh, and he points not directly toward the pond, but a little to same general direction, a little to the uh, east of it. Okay. Well, we'll go follow that. Can, can and, you uh, wanna... tell us what she looked like there? Oh, uh, let's see. She was, uh, I haven't described Ella to you, have I? You said she was a halfling. Yeah, she was a halfling. That was it. So she, oh, there she is in my head. She's, uh, you know, she's very, uh, she's very strong in the legs. You could tell she's very strong in the legs. And, uh. Well, you don't skip leg day. You never no. skip leg day. She had like a brace on. Uh, it looked like she usually wear, you know, she was running, like she was kind of running through the forest though. But she had a brace on her side. And, uh, uh, braided hair that kind of went around her head. Uh, and it looked like she was just wearing kind of a barmaid's dress and scurrying through the forest. And that's, you know, we were worried because she just looked like somebody from town and that maybe something was wrong. And she didn't say what was going on there, no? No, she just, you know, we saw her kind of in the distance and she turned around and looked back at us and then just took off running. What? Sounds like she was scared, poor thing. Oh, yeah. You know, I got that sense. And one of the bears kind of sits up and goes, Oh, she's not good at that spell at all, but she, uh, I don't think she was really trying. I think, I think she just wanted to get away from us. Had we known Ella to use magic? Mm -mm. Okay. But she's new. I'll reach her wing out and kind of Pat hug the bear. Mm. He kind of yeah, like a dog you know. getting a good a good shoulder what? pat. There you go. And if, what um, over? Oh, oh go ahead. No, no, please. Um, if Mordecai's back with the water satchel by now? Yeah, he's he's a, probably approaching right about now. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take it and just kind of pour some on the tree roots and be like, "Thank you for helping and." Uh, you know, allowing me to charm you. <laughs> Sorry. I knew what you were trying to do, and I appreciate your adventuring crew. You're always respectful of the creatures of the forest, and I knew that if someone else had run into us on this trail, things probably would have been different, so blessings to you, and he kind of pats you on the head. Oh. A couple little like leaf petals float down onto your shoulders. Oh please! No. Yeah, uh, that's sweet. So, so do we know what's over there? That bear place where she was running? Yeah, oh, okay. just more of the forest. Okay. She wasn't going to the lake. I don't think she wasn't on this path. Was anyone else coming through, heading toward the lake? unusual not this evening she's the only person we've seen this evening some adventurers and hunters throughout the day but just the normal people well I say we get Ella and then we get the kegs and we get back to Duke yeah wait we have our friends with the cold school yeah but we gotta do that yeah that's fine let's go but okay. uh, shouldn't we get you patched up a little bit there, Shelby? Oh, oh, I can take care of that real quick here. And I oh. just go ahead and um, cast Cure Wounds on myself. Nice. Well, yeah. I do get worried, you know. Well, I'm, I'm fine, though, you know. I'm, 
Oh, that was disappointing. You know, patting oh, off the blood and everything. You yeah. actually are going to get... Um... Actually, there's... Oh, go ahead. There's a different way I would have liked to do that. Um, instead of casting Cure Wounds, uh, can I use the ability that... Uh, can I say before I shapeshifted back out that I repaired my damage while I was in bear Oh, form? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, then I will do that instead. So uh, that will do more. And I think when the tree uh, came to greet you and kind of gave you a friendly pat in your bear form, he gives you a bonus three hit points. Oh, cool. Ooh, so that didn't actually do that much there, right there. No, no, it didn't. Um, or, or we could take a short rest and I could spend hit dice. Is that okay? Did we take a few minutes? Yeah. That's a couple. An hour or so. Relaxing, friends? What do you think? Thoughts? Yeah, I'm okay with a short rest. Oh, it's. it's uh, uh, hmm? No? Do you not no, want to stop? No, I do, but uh, it's a little dark for me to go looking, so I feel useless. So I got a, I, I got an idea. If we can stay here and we can be safe for a minute, uh, we can uh, we can uh, use, uh, I, if there's a, a friend over here, in fact, one of the bears maybe, um, would you mind if I if I borrowed your, your, your abilities for a moment, bear friend? Would you mind going and taking a look for us? Oh, nose. And he taps on his beak. Well, let me see if there's how dark vision. If not, if not, I'll find a creature nearby who has dark vision and can see but for us. They have spectacular <laughs> sense of smell. <laughs> yeah. They have great smell. Yeah, they could yeah. trace. I mean, you may not like They don't like have dark smell, vision, but, yeah. but they're, you know, uh, yeah, whatever whatever creature I could find. But the, the bears, if they can go by smell, then great. Yeah, I would say that they can navigate by smell since they're not, you know, actively in combat. They're kind of taking their time a little bit. Um, they're able to go. It's probably like five uh, feet though, though uh, that actually, <coughs> you know what, that does not help us. I, I need to be able to look through their eyes, Whoa. I think. Yeah, I, I, see, I can see, see what it sees and hear what it hears. There are owls. There's nothing about snow. Is there an owl nearby? There are owls. There is an owl. Oh, okay. Then let's try that night. I call out to the owl. Hello, friend of feathers. Ooh. And I, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and decide that the way that I would identify that particular creature is eating things quietly. You, feathers, things quietly. Hello? Would you, mind if I, uh, would you mind helping us out here? Flaps down. What you need? Uh, would you mind if, if you go take a look over there? There's a, a person like, like, well, I guess closest is Mary here, uh, to what, what the person looked like, but they're much shorter. Uh, would you mind going and taking a look for us and letting me let me understand what you're seeing as well? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I will cast B sense while I am healing up and send off uh, the owl to go do that. Cool. And the um, the awakened trees actually say we will make sure no one disturbs your rest. Well, and they, so they are going to kind of circle the camp and, and make sure that you are safe. So your owl goes soaring through the forest and you were sending it after the girl? Yes, please. So one, two, 12 plus two. Let me just roll my hit dice here. Another one because I rolled a one on that. That's disappointing. That's three plus. Are you kidding me? Mm. It was another one on my d12. So it's six oh. plus. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> okay. Um.
healed up a little bit. Uh, no, I, I spent three hit dice, so I, oh, okay. I healed all the uh, almost all the way. Okay, all right. But you you rested. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll look through the eyes and take a look uh, to see what we see, see what they see. Yeah, roll me a perception check with advantage because you are a flying owl who can see in the dark. I can use the owl's senses for this. Oh, yeah. So yeah. just if you give me a moment. Uh, okay, so the owl has a perception plus six and advantage on it. So, e 20 advantage. And if you need any owl Plus. facts, I am your raptor nerd. Uh, so, 1622. But owl has the best sight. Oh, so yeah. 22. 22? 22 Correct. is good. Um, mm -hmm. So, swooping over uh, it's pretty quiet night in the forest. Some regular animals kind of bedding down for the evening. It's just after dusk. And pretty soon the owl catches up to the giant, the big wolf. Uh, and you see that the wolf is still sort of at, running at a trot, not like sprinting, but looking over their shoulder as they run and uh, sees kind of a sunken log in the ground and runs over to it and just sort of settles in next to it and sort of hides behind it a little bit. It's a cuddle log. It's a cuddle log. It's a scared puppy with this cuddle log. Yeah, yeah. It's round, it's heavy, it's wood. And we don't see Ella in, in any sort of humanoid form, correct? You do not see any humanoids around. You only see the wolf that you saw before. Okay. I think there's a good chance here that we are, uh, we're dealing with somebody who can do what I do. Uh, perhaps. Yeah, I... That, that seems likely. It's very mysterious. It's like having a secret life. That's why we keep uh, Shelby around. She's very mysterious. Very mysterious. Oh, no, not really. <laughs> I just... Well, not to you. Well, I think you're all mysterious, though it's a wonderful, wonderful world you've made of your your own types of forests and, and the trees that you have for shade and the way you stack up things. I think it's pretty remarkable. I, I don't do understand have, how it works. So, I do have to stay. I, I'm impressed by how they stack things there, too. It's, it's very neat. It's things on top nifty. of each other. Just... I think that's why I love, I love cities is because they they just they're stacked so high with interesting things. They're just very loud. There's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Do you realize I'm babbling because I have no input right now? <laughs> I oh. think that you're doing great. No, I mean I, 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 I. What can I do? I'm in a dark forest. What? In the dark. I mean, we could light a torch, but maybe we should go after, maybe we should do that and go after uh, the wolf. Bunch of like floating orbs with prestidigitation to try to light things up a little bit for- uh, oh, better now. A nice, a nice oh, yeah. spooky shadow casting glow. It's it's spooky, but it's definitely visible. You can see around you. I mean, and you know exactly the direction you need to go and you know you're probably a 10 minute walk from that log, from like being on top of it. Let's head that way and uh, try to talk to a wolf, I guess, right? Well, we're not trying to be stealthy or anything, are we? Because we're failing badly if we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think so, but it did run away from us last time. So let's just make sure it doesn't do that again. I'm with you. I'm fully in support. All right, y'all make your way, and um, and you don't try to be quiet. Coming up to no. it, 
No, I, I might, like, when we're kind of, when I can see the log within just, like, eyesight, I might just kind of softly go, Ella? Like, question mark. Oh, okay. I can call out in Druidic, too. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Try that first and see if she recognizes the language of the forests. You see, as you call out to the, the log, sort of silhouetted, um, the, this big wolf rises and and hackles half up, looks at you when you when you speak in druidic and just kind of kind of squints, but doesn't run. Just does tap your paws if it's if it's you, Ella. I say in druidic. She, you see that the the wolf sort of starts to kind of back away. It's okay. It's okay. No one's gonna hurt you. As the trees and the bears can attest. Just kind of stands there. Did uh, would did you shout El- like do a little call out to Ella? Yeah. yeah. So you see that after a moment, uh, the wolf steps forward, and then steps forward again, and comes and sits in front of you and looks like straight in your eyes, Mary. Like big yellow oh. eyes. Hi, uh, hey, Ella. Um, it, can you like nod and shake your head? Okay. Uh, can I, uh, uh, do you have control over this form right now? Kind of whimpers. Oh, okay. Um, well, hey, we, we're gonna go on a quest for Duke. We're, we're trying to help you out. We're trying to help Duke out. Um, you see her it, kind of perk up a little bit at Duke, but also look a little scared. It's okay. Hey, he's not mad. He's just worried. He's worried about you. Panting a little bit, but... Yeah. Stands up. Kind of shakes a little bit. Um, if... If this is a curse, maybe between all of us, like there, there's something we can do. Uh, unless you just want to come with us in wolf form, you're more than welcome to do that. No pressure. You see that um, almost bashfully, this wolf is would probably be like up to my shoulder in reality, and uh, kind of paws the ground uh, a little bit bashfully and then bears her fangs which are like massive huge fangs and just kind of shakes her head like no nah, i'm good i'm good like this yeah that's metal as fuck <laughs> <laughs> the wolf blushes <laughs> and pads slowly forward and uh seems to be following you guys doesn't really know no well i mean it's ella she doesn't know her way around the forest she's following you cool Okay. I'll 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 go last and say Ella if you if you want you can just follow me and uh do you need anything? She <laughs> there's a kitty cat. She yeah. uh shakes her head and uh just sort of kind of like rolls her wolf shoulders and is <sighs> is just plodding along next to you. May I uh Take a minute and uh, cast Speak with Animals. Yes, you may. Let me look. See if this helps here. There is an animal that wants to speak to us. It's true. It's true. (laughs) Who is this creature? You're saying, hello, we want to pay attention. (laughs) What are you all doing? It sounds like fun. I think I want to get involved. Which is what everyone who's watching should be saying about world builders. That's right. And the geeks Can't beat and good fundraiser that we're doing. I want to get both. That's right. A fun, and this time for uh, world builders, there's some some new Valdemar merchandise that's never been available before. So grab it up. It's it's pretty. It's super cool. Very it's really cool. And all that... sorts of cool D and D stuff. There's a set of Die Hard dice that are really amazing, which we love. Die Hard dice. Um, yeah. Diana from Die Hard from- Dice is uh, is my DM oh. uh, for Vampire or my storyteller for Vampire. Pretty um, cool humans. Yes, they are excellent humans, but they are really cool dice too. 
also excellent dice. So you uh, cast speak with animals and you hear kind of a demure, sort of high-pitched, hello? Hello, hello. Oh, you can talk to me now, okay. I can. Oh, I don't know what's happening. So what do you remember? Because you left your apron. Uh, well, I remember feeling really sick last night at the end of my shift. Well, no, I'm sorry. So I, I, I ran home, and the last thing I remember is feeling really dizzy on my way home. And I don't even know if I slept in my own bed last night. I just kind of woke up in the forest. Well, did anything strange happen to you before that? But you know what? And she kind of, it looks, you can sense that she's very like scared and kind of resigned. And she said, well, I moved out of the last town I was in after a bad bar fight. Some guy bit me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I don't think he was, I mean, I don't know. I just knew I had to get out of town that working in a big city you get you it's being a barmaid you see all sorts of stuff I thought oh I'll go to the quiet country next and I don't want to cause Duke any trouble I, I didn't know there was anything wrong with me I thought and I thought I would become a big mean mean creature but I'm just kind of a big wolf I think I think there's uh there's nothing wrong with you you're just in a little bit of a different different way of being than you used to be so you know, we'll figure this out. If you don't want to stay like this, I'm sure we can find someone to help with that. But, you know, um, for now, you're not hurting anybody. We can we can have you stay with us and just we can keep you from biting people for now because it sounds like that's probably not a good thing. But uh, wolves are wonderful creatures. They're very loyal. They take care of one another. They take care of their families. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, you've got you're you're a very very good kind of animal but also you might like being a halfling so if that's what you prefer i'm sure we can figure something out for you and she lifts this huge paw and goes it'd be pretty hard to hold a beer with this so we could just get you some cool adaptable tech but oh daja works in the town she could make me something but i think well Let's see. It's your choice here. You got lots of options. I'm sure we can figure something out. At least for now, if we're going to go try to, to find people. And as a halfling, I'm pretty powerless. And even though it's really scary, it kind of feels cool to be so strong. And she yeah. kind of bares her teeth a little bit again. <laughs> <and> is, <"Arr." laughs> Those are some nice choppers you got there, Ella. It's very proudly kind of like, let's go. And you okay. can sense that she's like, went from being terrified to like, oh my gosh, my friends. Yay. Well, come on. We're going to go find the rest of our, our uh, the patrons who went missing from the bar yesterday. They were worried about you. So we went looking for you first, but now we're going to go find everybody else who kind of went after some cobalts for making trouble. And, and she says to you, oh, I saw the, uh, the Regal Stallions ride by earlier today. It was, it was pretty early this morning, uh, but uh, I, I was able to just kind of stay out of their way and they didn't bother me. So, um, but I saw them ride to the lake. It looked like they were probably just gonna, you know, go, go adventure like adventurers do. Uh, Shelby. Could you ask her about the missing cask? Oh, yeah, Ella, there were those big uh, round things. They put the beer in. Oh, yes, yes. Some of them disappeared. Do you know what happened there? Mm. I can't say I remember. I don't know if it's because my memory is bad or... I think they were there when I left the bar last night, but... I can barely yes, maybe, remember. It could have disappeared while uh, while it was all unattended, though. 
Yeah, so. usually I leave later and then Duke kind of takes a break and then comes back for the night shift to stays there. So he probably just thought I took off early. Cool. Okay. Oh. Ready to go, everybody? Yeah. Set off through the woods. And you come across this. Um, you can see very easily to all of the edges of the pond, but it's decently sized. Uh, this, the moon is brightly reflected silver disc on the surface and uh, just kind of around the curve of the pond, there is the um, entrance to what you guys know as the cobalt cave that Duke directed you to. So you have about enough space to, if you want to sneak up on it or make some plans, you're, you're, at, you're at planning distance. So I guess what are all of our strengths that we want to play to here? I know uh, uh, the striker's got the advantage of the air. Um, I mean, if there's any skeletons or anything, I can, you know, raise a couple. Um, but what do you guys think? Well, I could take to the air and, and circle overhead and just keep a general lookout. What about sending Mordecai in to have a look for you? He's more unobtrusive than the rest of us. True. And he can't die. Not for long. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll send Mordecai ahead um, just to look. Great. If, give, Mordecai, give me a perception check. Cool, cool, cool. He's been kind of killing it on his checks tonight, I feel like. Mm. Right? Oh my god, and he is again. Man, I should just do everything as Mordecai. Dirty 22. <laughs> so wow. this is kind of a burrow with a little bit of like shingling built out over it. And you know there's actually kind of a cave system. It, maybe not a cave system, but like a big den area and then some little side dens in this. Um, and as Mordecai approaches, you see that a dark swath of fabric has been hung across the entrance. Usually it's just sort of open. Um, and Mordecai can hear drum beats from the inside. He can hear sort of a But he can't see anything because there's this this uh, big, it just looks like a huge piece of black fabric that has been slung over the entrance to cover it. Guys, I think the cobalts are having a rave. Seems rude to interrupt, but... I think Wait. we should watch the party. I'll, I'll swoop on back down and land and go... Uh, if the Regal Stallions went in after them and they're having a party, I don't think the Regal Stallions did very well. Do they need a rescue? Maybe they took the cakes for the party. Oh. And I the wonder. The mystery deepens. Because honestly, cobalt caves are a place I don't want to be, but if there is peril, we must help. Mordecai definitely noticed signs of, you know, actually with a 20, absolutely noticed the stallions tied up to a tree about midway between you where you guys are and the cobalt den. Um, and they all sort of give him a jovial snort they're good friends with they they see him as an honorary stallion and he oh, yeah. he you see his little spine kind of get an extra curve in it as he trots by um on the way over to this dark booming thudding cave so you know they're probably in there Ooh. all right well i'm i'm about ready to trot in there myself and just why weren't we invited 
are we the FOMO party? Is that what's happening? <laughs> They're in there adventuring with the booze and the cask and everything, and we're just... Hey, well, you'll you know, have, gotta go in the, and see. Who knows? They could the be backup right squad. Here we are. I mean, I can go. We can. We can go look. I can go. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to go look? Yeah, I, go I'm. Look. I'm ready to charge with Shelby. Uh, I'll just draw back the curtain and. I'm ready to watch you. All right. <laughs> so you approach. Uh, it's it's definitely Shelby would have to kind of crouch over to look into this space. Uh, it's probably only about six feet tall. Okay. Um, and as you open, you do see it's very dark and there's moving bodies and there's kind of a flashing light pattern happening. And you hear <laughs> and uh, but you can just see these bodies moving. You can't see anything else. It's sort of like a little tunnel on the way into a bigger chamber. Nobody notices you. All right. Uh, oh gosh. Um, does anyone else have any other ideas before I do a dumb thing? Oh. I mean, yeah, I can, I can turn invisible if I need to and go look around. Uh, oh. or I could go turn myself into something stealthy and go look around if you would like me to go scout. But. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to probably just try to, <laughs> I'm, I'm dressed pretty much completely in black. Um, I'm going to kind of sneak my way in there the way that I think Mary just, you know, she's late to the party. She just kind of like scooches in and tries to see if she can like, I'm kind of part of the, along the wall. Yeah. Just, yeah, see if she can see any of the uh, stallions in there. This, so, oh, Shelby, can you do a giant snake? Oh, no. Okay. Because well, it's <laughs> never a good idea, but, you know, you saw what happened to Thulsa, but, yeah. But yeah. they'd respect a snake. What did you say, yeah. Mary? What? Oh, I thought you said something. Sorry. Oh, I just <laughs> meant, like... It, Never mind. <laughs> so you peek out as this sort of uh, opens up, and you do see the the regal stallions' uh, armor kind of shed to the side. Uh, you know, most of them kind of in their 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 pants and just absolutely trance dancing to the music. Um, you see. A number of kobolds doing the same thing. Roll a perception check. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what else you see. This isn't Mordecai rolling. Oh, it's still an 18. Huh. An 18. Okay. So you look around. Sorry. Some there you hear dogs barking in the distance. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ella's hackles rise. But you look and see... Floating up by the ceiling, there is a winged kobold. And he's wearing those like mirror sunglasses. And he uh, appears to have like a magic item of some type that is playing this music. And as you look just over his shoulder, you see what looks like a crystal ball that has been cracked, like marble, like on the inside and it's refracting all of this light around the room. And uh, you, that's that's who you see. Oh, and you also see, you also see Olwen dancing and you see two ogres dancing. Okay. And none of them notice you. Everyone was invited here but us. I'm gonna give you guys a second to plan and go make sure my dogs aren't gonna freak out. Yeah. Well, my idea was once I was in here, I would thunderclap and then just kind of ask why we weren't invited. <laughs> I love that so, plan. It's a good plan. Do we think we need to break the, the, the ball or disrupt the sound? Or do we think we need to... 
here's the thing. Go try and shake our friends out of the spell. Well, it's just that right now everybody is having fun and they're at peace. So maybe our rescue should be pulling the stallions out and letting the others stay occupied. Sure. We That's could do that. First What were you going to say, Jen? Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. So maybe that's uh, step number one is we stealth grab them out. And then I think the next we try step... and grab our friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't even really need to stealth because they don't even notice that you're there. They. Well, do, you, do you think you should plug your ears? I would, what I was going to say, as you look over and see that cracked orb, because the other two of you are still over the shoulder, Mary, I need you to do a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. That's a 12. Woo, you guys see Mary, uh, you see her silhouette, the lights start, you know, there's lights flashing and her Eladrin silhouette. And then you see her just step through and starts dancing. And you just can't help it. You're just in the groove. The rhythm's got her. The rhythm got her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, you get the sense that you'll probably, you know, maybe with a song change or something, be able to try to snap out of it. But for the moment, you are, your dancing shoes are stuck on. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So if I were to detect magic, uh, can I tell whether it's the 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 mirror ball or the other object that is causing the enchantment? So you detect magic and you detect that the music is enchanted to sound better than it is, but that's all. Okay. Um, it's actually oh. kind of garbage. But Auto-tune. For, yeah, for now, it's it's got like a filter on it. You notice that the mirror ball appears to have been kind of a straightforward charm spell once upon a time, but was broken. And now just instead of having its original effect, anybody in the radius is just dancing. Cool. I wonder if we can just break it all the way. Well, I wonder if we, we could a- just move it outside. Well, I, Get everybody I don't even to follow. Think... <laughs> the Pied well, we Piper could... with the disco ball. Oh, yeah. If you're going to fight kobolds, you don't want to do it in their cave. Well, I, I'm just thinking right now, I got this here boomerang here. And I was thinking maybe I could try and throw that into the cave and, and hit the, the well, mirror I, ball. I could but try to I, lasso it. But can your lasso reach that far? Oh, you can. Well, you can fly, but you'd have to go in. Well, yeah, it would be more of a jump for me. But uh, the problem is, if a party ends, not everybody's going to be happy that the jams have been packed up. Yeah, but they've been gone since like, well, even our friends alone have been gone since this morning. So they're probably tired. Yeah, that's true. You do notice they all look to be very exhausted. Yeah, that can't be good for them. You know, I I have a suggestion. Yeah. And it's risky. Yeah. I think we should I think we should plug our ears up and just dance them out of there one at a time. But doesn't that mean we have to go in? We could just take it out from here. I don't like enchantment on people. Yeah, it takes away their their free will. So I think we should get rid of the thing that's enchanting them. But then they'll be unhappy. They look pretty tired. Yeah, but there are ogres that could then punch them because they're unhappy and they'll die. But they also might just go take a nap. Nap sounds nice, but for a rescue, if I were going to be heroic, (sighs) 
I would jump in and 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 grab that globe and 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 maybe the little the little wing cobalt and and pull them out. Well, maybe we try and take out the disc cobalt and then we take out the winged cobalt and then Oh yeah, I don't want to break the 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 ball though because it's probably Wouldn't very that valuable. Would break the enchantment there then? Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's I mean I'd like to see it in the club in the in the It's 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 enchanting people and I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean I don't like the, I don't like the non-consensuality of it, but I like the idea of a ball that makes me dance. It's the it's the newest club experience. You don't have to even put thought into dancing. As soon as you get through the door, show your yeah. ID, start dancing. That's I think that's a great idea. We could have glowy ball night back at the bar. Well, what uh, if we take inspiration from this and then Mar and then Mary's got those those lights? Maybe she could just make a, a something happen with that, and it's not going to have to be enchanting anybody because I just think this is really not nice to do. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Mary has any control anymore over her her sparkly lights as she's. You dancing. could probably uh, shout something and move your your pro. You're doing like poi, like raver dancing. <laughs> Mary is not a good dancer, and I don't think this is helping at all. It's like <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> Shepherd. Yeah, dancing. Mary Shepherd. Um, the sparkly lights just form. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Shelby. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a chance then. All right, Shelby. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll plug up my ears in case that it's a, a, a sound thing. Um, and I'll jump in and I'll put a bag over it and see if that helps. All right. Because I don't want them to come out of it too sudden, like a shock to their systems, because ogres in there, you know, they tend to get enraged. And uh, I, I say to the barbarian, you know, uh, generalization there, because you just never know what how someone's going to respond, and they've been they're tired, and it, it would be saving them, wouldn't it? There, we might it be would. grateful. Yeah, it it it, it would, but uh, I break really easily, so I'm concerned. Uh, but I will go. I will go give it a try. Shelby, as you are, as you guys are debating. Um, you hear Ella from behind you go, Shelby, I think I'm in my head. I just got really scared. Can you walk me outside? Can you, can you walk me back to the tree really fast? And you see her little legs are shaking. Oh, she doesn't Ella. like the deep bass of the music. Oh, I'm sorry, Ella. I mean, yes, I can go. I can take you. Come on, let's okay. go. You go ahead and we'll do that. We'll be right I'll... back. You can go ahead and give it a try and just don't you. get caught in it because if you do... I'm telling you now I'm breaking the thing from here. I'm not going to go in the room because I mean, dancing's fun, but I don't like the whole capturing thing. And then we can take care of the, the, the guy up top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go take, I'm going to go take Ella here and we'll be right back. So has the song changed yet? Uh, yes. The song just changed. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Sandstorm, Darude. Um, yeah. That was. <laughs> the little dice are killing me. Still 12. Oh, nope, not good enough. Oh, you see, man. Mordecai in the corner has somewhere got like a mirror reflective flat brim hat and he has glow sticks laced through his ribs and oh, he's just kind of shimmy. Little skelly goat oh. shimmy. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Mary is Mordecai's familiar, so I can see the problem. Yeah, yeah. They're both lost in the sauce right now. Just terrible dancing on the dance floor. You notice? Gray? Great dancer. Because you guys Ooh. have friends in this crowd. Gray? Great dancer. Zay? Looks like she's dance fighting, maybe. Like, yeah. if you got too close, you'd probably get punched. Sure. And, uh, 
Zoe is in the corner doing like that, like tornado move, like this one. It's like nonstop, round and around. And she looks very dizzy. You see, she's wobbling a lot. All right. Oh. I'm going to plot myself a course. All right. Uh, I have acrobatics and athletics. Uh, because it's a fairly tight space, you know, I don't want to just wing blast somebody. Um, so yeah, I'm going to you really... Should... You're going to try to put a bag over it is your, your goal? I'll I'll try it outright, steal it. Um, but oh, okay. at the very least, I'll wind up covering it with a wing. All and, right. You know, hanging there. But um, this is my plan. I All have, right. I can do insight checks, I can do athletics, and I can do acrobatics. Do an acrobatics check to see how well you sort of swoop into the room. How do I swoop? How does I the swoop maneuver go? I'll go the swoops. 16 plus 6, 22! That's Woo! a smooth swoop. So, you get right in there. You sort of bank around the side, and it's it's kind of a conical room. So you just sort of... And you get right up next to it, but then when you turn inward and look at the orb, roll a wisdom check. I crash right in. Wisdom sav oh. saving throw. Uh, wisdom saving throw. Let me make sure I get it here. Man, I love dancing. <laughs> I came up with a nine. I mean, I'm going to crash into it no matter what, but... You yeah, know. so that might you, be enough to stop it, but I had momentum. <laughs> you know what? Roll a luck check. Just roll a flat D twenty. A flat D twenty. We'll All see which right. direction you crash. <laughs> okay. What could go wrong? Fifteen. Okay, so you sort of whip around it and go tumbling and uh, sort of flap back into the back of an ogre and, and land on your feet and humiliating, I'm so sorry to do this, humiliatingly, you start to do the chicken dance and you're just going around the dance floor with your chicken dance. I got it. It's, I it's got it. I'm the hot wings. I can strut it. Yep. You got the hot wings and you are you are probably singing along with the music and everything. So as Shelby gets back, just in time, you see the shadow, you kind of peek through the curtain to the side and you see the shadow of Straker whip towards the orb and then right before oh. it reaches it, oh. down oh. to the ground and grooving and moving and grooving and moving. Oh, Straker. Okay, let's give this a shot here then. Yeah, I missed, but it feels great. And um, it's actually right. going to be another song change when you get back. So Mary can roll. Actually, both of you can roll a wisdom saving throw to see if uh, Please. if you like the uh, next jam. 16? You're free. A wisdom oh, check, God. huh? Uh-huh. Wisdom save? Wisdom save, yeah. Okay. Survey says... This is a great tune too. Honestly, you, I'm having the best time. Watch, yes. wings up, wings up, wings up. Mm -hmm. Y'all want this party started, right? Yeah. There's a dance circle formed and as the dance circle forms, Mary kind of backs her way out and Mordecai sort of. I, on my way out, um, can I, if Zoe was off in the corner, can I like try to grab her and take her with me? Yeah, do a strength uh we'll do a, a contest okay not very strong can I, can I throw my boomerang and try and try yeah to absolutely at, basically at the same time you can uh, i i do not grab zoe <laughs> what how what did you get two zoe got a one. Oh my god <laughs> so she's on the dance floor going like this and mary is just kind of like trying to find a limb that's not going to flail and then like half football tackles Zoe gets her <laughs> the shoulder and Zoe's still just kind of like twerking in Mary's face. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. JB, I'm You've telling you. JB, uh, if they're is... doing a dance circle, I'm gonna jump in the middle and break oh, yeah. dance like they've never seen. Yep, putting on a show. Give Hell me a performance yeah. check and give me an attack roll for the or is attack roll for the boomerang? Yeah. Cool. So I've reached down, I've pulled out my my beautiful wooden boomerang, and I throw it with such perfect accuracy that I rolled a nat 20. So it's a 24 to hit. I got a nat 20 on the performance. That's some good dancing. Okay, so this cobalt is swooping around. And you guys can tell the beat is about to drop. It's about to drop. It's about to drop. It's building up. Whoop. It's building up. It's building up. And the moment the beat drops, you see this beautiful wooden boomerang slice this thing. It, it, it chops it in half and these two sides shatter out to the side and sparkling dance glass comes floating uh, down. Uh, I'm doing the... Flash dance. This flash dance. And as you do that, you see the cobalt at the top goes, uh oh. And everybody sort of slows their dancing down and it looks like they're starting to wake up. <laughs> but you do not go into initiative. So you are free of your, uh, you are still in the middle of the dance circle. There is some now very more obviously bad music he's he's not been able to keep up the glamour on his records and um, uh he sort of looks down at like freezes like uh oh i got caught and you see the party slowly kind of coming to life well straker well straker you might want to go go get that guy and i'm rising up you know, there's Ridley's in the air and everything is shiny and I got sparkles on and I get the heroic look. Mm, dramatic lighting and everything. The and I bird. will just leap up to grab the wing cobalt. Awesome. <laughs> Do a attack roll with the dexterity bonus. Mm. Your, your just snatching them out of the sky. Okay, so let's see. Let me get this right here. Mm, I confused myself. I confused myself. Uh -huh. it hurt itself in its confusion. <laughs> dirty twenty. A dirty twenty. Um. Okay. So, whew, hold on just a moment. Let me. You get this guy just right by his wings where his wings meet his back mm -hmm. and so you just have him and he's he's kind of uh, uh, but you feel like you could kind of wrestle him to the ground you could probably just kill him if you wanted to you could just rip him in half if you're you know inclined I'm not i didn't think it would be but some I'm parties not. would well the thing is He's still got DJ immunity. Oh, okay. Yeah, he goes, man, I was practicing my set. Come on. I know, I know, but it's wearing these guys out. <sighs> Dude, that's not my fault. I can't turn the orb off once it started. Mm, it's off now. Let's yeah, talk. That sucks. I guess it was kind of bad, though. I mean, like... I think these people would have eventually died, and that's not really. I mean, that's not the. I don't want those Yelp reviews. So Lord, I, I, you, I'm just gonna. You, and you see, you can feel his wing beat, sort of like trying to like. He's like I'm just gonna actually. Uh, I'm just gonna go. I think we're gonna just go like grab a beer at the corner store. That's cool. No, that's not really happening. But look, just a little advice from a guy who's been around the city. You don't get the good venues by killing your dancers. Well, I know, I know. That's why I was, I mean, like, so first I came, cause this is like my cousin. And I was like, man, let's party. I found this orb in the ruins. And, uh, but I like dropped it on the way back. And yeah. uh, I, I don't really have good eyesight. Um, which is why, you know, I, I just kind of circle up here. Um, and kind of why you got that jump on me, I think. I can't mm -hmm. see super great, but I'm a great DJ. I love music. 
Well, look, my little friend. And then, you know, some, or I think those ogres were going to eat us. Uh, yeah. And you, you, do, you look over and the ogres are asleep on top of each other in a pile. Yeah. Right. So here's what we're going to do. All right, little buddy. Listening to me? Well, yeah. Okay. I think you got potential. Right? But you got to not be evil about this. You dig? Okay. All right. So you're saying like a rebrand. Well, yeah. Look, look we can take you back. Okay. But you got to make some promises to us. And you got to remember that some of the people that are in here, like their actual job is tracking down people that offend them. And you, you feel kind of tremble runs through him. Like he, he's like, uh, uh, yeah. Realize he's a little in over his head that if these people had snapped out of it, they probably would have just murdered him. Yeah. So maybe you're be, doing him a favor. There is, yeah. I do not want to impede anybody's groove. All right. Uh, and as you're having this conversation, the, the regal stallions step over to Mary and Shelby and say, the fuck is going on? <laughs> uh, do you know what happened to the kegs up at the uh, at Duke's Tavern? No, we've been adventuring here all day. I mean, <laughs> dancing. We we got out here this way. Listen, it's embarrassing. We should have known better, but we thought we would be able to resist it. So have you, are the kegs in there? You see no kicks. Hmm. There may have been mysteries that we just don't have time to get to. Yeah. It's true. So look, I know you're all tired. Why don't you sit down, take a bit of a rest, drink some water. And then you, since we went and did all the other jobs that you were supposed to be doing, maybe now you can go do the, the, the other job that was still left, which is track down with the kegs. There were four of them. Now there was only one. They disappeared in the middle of the night because Ella was dealing with, uh, with some issues uh, of her own. And then uh, uh, so, so somebody came in and took the kegs and we're not sure what happened there, but if you can, if you can look into that and find out for us, we'd really appreciate it because we did all the work that you were supposed to be doing today. So. Uh, and, and Gray goes, well, that's fair if I've ever heard it. And Zay goes, cracks her knuckles and goes, someone stole the beer. Someone and uh, the they beer. go marching into the forest, even though they're, they're, they look tired, but not at a level of exhaustion. You know, they'll probably go back, take a sleep and get right on this quest in the morning. Mm -hmm. Thanks friends. And before they go, can I give them some good berries for their travels? Yeah, yeah, you, that probably gives them just, it's a, it's a, it's a, a berry bowl energy drink. Exactly. <laughs> and so they take off. You actually, as you were talking to them, the kobolds are no, they, it seems like they were, terrified and just sort of all slithered out of this den like they got way more than they bargained for trying to hang out with their cousin and uh, so now it's basically sleeping ogres Olwen and the the regal stallions have gone back to camp and you've got this flying kobold in your grip okay now we're going to come to an understanding you and i all right what like a all contract right. are you gonna be my manager well kind of outside maybe yeah, look, here's the thing, and I'm carrying him along like he's, you know, little little tiny yeah. trike handlebars. Um, yeah. <laughs> look, here's the way it is, okay? I mean, this is the real talk, okay? You are a flying kobold, and yeah. I think you're smart, and I think you're cool, but a lot of people don't, and those guys that just walked out of here came to kill everybody in that cave whoa dude that's not cool well this is what fate gave us though okay instead so you're of saying like i shouldn't incapacitate all of my fellow kobolds in a place that we're known to be regularly and like 
make them incapable of fighting. Okay, yeah, no, I see what you're, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, is if you stuck with me, all right, and people saw you with me, yeah, yeah. they would know that you are not to be killed. So you are going to be my manager. Yeah, now what we need to do over time is we need to get your cousins in here to stop being dicks. Oh, dude, I don't know. I mean, I can try to talk to them, but like half my lyrics are about how my cousins kick my ass all the time. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. You're going to be able to to teach them as a leader. And he's, he, he wiggles. He goes, right. I mean, man, I like I get your jive. I get it. And I'm down. But like, can you let me go? Well, yeah. Yeah, I can but you got to agree, all right? You got to agree and swear on the beat. Oh, an oath on the music, dude. What do you want? What are you making me oath? I'm saying, let me teach you. Oh, yeah, dude, let's go. All right. But there are times when I'm going to have to correct you on how you're acting. And that's so that people with Big hammers don't smash you. Oh yeah, that's cool, dude. That's cool. No. Usually I fly out of the way, but like as long yeah. as it's like 420 friendly, I'm I'm down. Let's go. All right, little buddy. And I'll set him on a shoulder and let go of him there. Yeah. Yeah, and you see that he starts like folding up his DJ tray and Yeah, he's kind of like you don't know if he'll stick around, but he is glad that he's not dead. And yeah, sure, he'll go along yeah. with you. Yeah, come on, I'll teach you how to lead your people here so they don't interfere with the town. And uh, he, the, the two of you think that kobold is a leader, even in the ambitious, let's civilize these, these rabid kobolds, mm -hmm. is probably not the best, most charismatic choice. But nonetheless, what? you walk your way back. I, I'm assuming you walk your way back through the forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you do, you get back to the tavern and um, you see that indeed the other party has gone to bed. You actually see Olwen who had gone later in the day. So it wasn't quite as tired talking to Wilda saying, um, you know, I just, it was honestly kind of fun, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tired and kind of retelling the story, Duke, telling Duke the story as well. Mm -hmm. And as you come in, Duke goes, I knew you could do it. You, you found these guys. Did you find Ella? Yeah, yeah, Ella's, uh, Ella's okay. We're, we're still helping her recover, recoup from uh, a hard night, but yeah, we found her. Like it, like it. Okay. All right, well, as long as she's okay, uh, I would prefer if she told me she wasn't coming for a shift, but not, not because she'll be in trouble, just because I, you know, want to be able to cover. Yeah, you know, she has found a, a whole new side of her life that she didn't know uh, was really important, but it struck her so suddenly that she didn't have a time to let you know. But I don't think you should fire her for it. Oh, no, I wouldn't fire her for just missing one day of work, especially if she wasn't feeling well. No, 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 no. Yeah. I just want to make sure she's okay. Do you have any okay. clerics that come in pretty regularly? Because, uh, oh, yeah. So, well, you know, maybe, Holy Communion. Maybe, maybe let them have a have a talk with her at some point. It might be a nice thing to do. It's also nice for her to make some new friends because it's a new town. You know. You see Duke kind of picks up what your land you feel like duke might have the highest insight of anyone you've ever met in your life he he picks up what you're laying down very quickly and goes you know i'll keep an eye out for her make sure she knows that no matter how she's feeling all we want is for her to feel healthy and safe so whatever she's going through we can we can help i'm you know i know when i hire somebody who's just moved suddenly from their city they've probably got a story so i you know I'll let her know that there's no trouble here. She's not going to get in trouble and then we'll, we'll get it figured out. But I'm so glad you found her. And, and the, they trudged in exhausted the regal stallions and uh, looks like you found them too. Sounds like had you, you had quite too. the party. 
And uh, I mean, I'm a little tired, but Mordecai is so small. Um, <laughs> he's very tired, so I have him in his hornbjorn, and he's just sleeping. Yeah, and uh, and I'll I'll be sure and and uh, and, and tell him, uh, you know, uh, I've got a new little friend here, and I'm going to be sponsoring him. Yeah, you see when uh, Elwin or Olin turns around and sees that the kobold that had him there for a while. Yeah. You you feel like you probably better buy that guy a beer and sit down and explain your logic. Now it's um, Olin. I'm going to get him a scotch. Yeah. Yep. And so you you go off with Olin. You you pass off your new protege mm -hmm. and uh, go about the fine art of convincing Olin that it's it's okay, bud. And uh, Mordecai is snoring with his little rattly bone snores in your horn bjorn and not a creature was harmed under shalby's watch everything was negotiated so lovely and duke says you know i'm i got a new beer shipment coming tomorrow i was able to get a messenger out so whatever happened to those kegs we'll figure it out but tonight your beers are on me and uh that why is would you want to wear a beer he laughs and he just starts pouring them. Turns around, starts pouring them. And shall be, shall be like in true puzzlement. But I don't understand. And the and the closing jingle of the sitcom plays. <laughs> Roll credits. Roll credits. The yeah, geek in the friend. van is Gray Miller, who also played Gray, <laughs> the <Rito laughs> Stallion. Who's a very good answer at the whole party? <laughs> hey there, Stallion. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for coming to hang out with us. Thank you. Huge, huge thanks. Behind the scenes, I was really having a Ella morning. I was out of it, not feeling well at all. And this team came together and got character. Everything is due to the wonderfulness of these players. So huge, huge thanks to them for supporting me as a Dungeon Master. And... World Builders is a charity. Please go check out the stuff on GDG, uh, Geeks Doing Good, in I'm out of words, Indiegogo, not Instagram. Indiegogo, we've got all sorts of cool stuff that you can pick up and everything, every penny that you are able to gently coax our way helps us keep our lights on, keep running and keep building a better world. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to my players. Real quick, let's go around and say, where people can find you online, starting with Larry. Hello, folks. Uh, Larry, uh, I'm over on Twitter at Larry Dixon TGK, which of course is for the Griffin King, a, uh, a a nickname that was given to me long ago by Andre Norton, and then Anne McCaffrey picked it up. And when Annie gives you a nickname, you stick with it, or will come, or she'll come up with one that's really dirty. You uh, put so it in your the, Twitter handle at in in that's honor. right uh, <laughs> at at TG at <laughs> at Larry Dixon TGK, and uh, you know I'm very accessible. Talk to me over there anytime. Send me messages. Uh, I'd like to tell you that we just had two great things happen outside of World Builders. Mercedes Lackey, my lovely and strange wife, just had her 71st birthday. And uh, we also have a new book called Beyond, which has just hit the shelves in hardcover, our 138th book. Uh, it's the 40th, 43rd book in the Valdemar series. And it is the founding of Valdemar at last. Wow. We finally got to do it. Wow. And right now, there are signed copies available from World Builders. You can get your, I mean, like, that is a legacy that you are picking up. A signed copy of. Yeah. Of Beyond. Yeah. 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 It's going to be amazing. We've been at it 40 years now, so. They're pretty decent at writing by this point. They're pretty good at the whole fantasy genre. So pick it up, pick it up. You'll want it. Whether it's through us or, or you know, at your local friendly bookstore. Well, and, Beyond. you know, we couldn't do it without everybody that enjoys our books. It's a, it's normally a pretty lonely life, but 
we get to do things like uh, we used to go to conventions and actually meet the people. And now we can do things like this, join you all online and just have a blast together. What a fantastic crew, you know, so terrific cast. Here, uh, thank, you, thank you, Jamie. You. And right. from now over to Jennifer. Yeah. Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, I am on on Tuesdays. I, I stream on my channel on Mondays. Tuesdays, I'm on Heroes of the Plains at 6 p.m. on uh, twitch.tv slash RPG. On Wednesdays, you can find me on Play Renegade, twitch.tv slash Play Renegade for uh, Vampire the Nightlife, um, which is just a delight. That that show is ridiculous. It's amazing. Uh, both shows are amazing. I, I love them both. Um, uh, tomorrow, I am doing a charity fundraiser for Trans Lifeline um, <gasps> oh, on yeah. um, TTRP Gifts uh, at 1 p.m. So it, have two windows open, have world builders, and have... Our, our game, we are doing Honey Heist as Owl Bears. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, an event. Um, I have two very exciting hats waiting for that event. Um, and oh, then, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be so much fun. And Honey Heist is such a great game. Um, yeah, it's going to be delightful. Um, and then uh, I'm the author of one of the authors on Kindle Keep Mysteries. I uh, am the creator of the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide. Um, and there's always a bunch of new announcements. And I, I helped create one of the inspiration tokens this year. So um, good, there. Good the best place to keep up is on Twitter. Builders. Yes, I love world builders. Everybody so follow on help. Twitch and Twitter. Trust me, if you enjoyed the shenanigans of this evening you're just gonna enjoy everything jen does just follow follow on twitter make sure you're just always tuning in and julia yeah. julia creator of our incredible beautiful tavern background it's so good thank you i had so much fun with it i just went buck wild especially with duke um so we I'm, have a whole head cannon for duke oh by my the way. god we went wild we were just as we were creating him um yeah, such uh, Jamie, thank you so much for bringing him to life. This was so such a joy. Um, yeah, so I'm Julie Madalena. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere at Jay Madalena, um, uh, Twitch, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and if you want to see what I'm up to, it would be either there or on. Um, oh gosh, my website jmadalena.myportfolio.com. Um, and let me think. Oh, and I made uh, four posters for the Indiegogo. You can find them. Um, I did a bunch of hands of the King Killer Chronicles characters. Um, so you can find them on the Indiegogo and support world builders. Which is so cool. Julia has done so much incredible art. And if you miss the in-person experience of walking through an art exhibit, just go to her website. You'll see so much beautiful art and it, it just It'll be basically like going to the MoMA. It's yeah. If uh, if you don't mind me interrupting here, yeah. um, I've been in the business a long time. My my contemporaries back when I started were people like Boris Vallejo and Frank Frazetta and Kelly Fries and all. And uh, Julia is every bit as good. Truly a a star, the most humble star that we know. Yeah. We, we love Julia. We love Larry. Everybody in this Zoom call, including myself, actually, did oh. contributed something to the Indiegogo. And uh, I designed the Ari, the Ari and the Moon mug. Yeah. I mean, it was Nate Taylor's incredible art, but I photoshopped yeah. it so it would look cool on a mug. And anyway. the washi tape. She also did the washi tape and it looks great. I oh, I love the washi, the washi tape. tape. I'm really excited. I hope that people i mean i just have a bucket of washi tape and i think it's so oh, much fun so I'm i hope people love it check out the indiegogo make sure you go follow everybody here make sure you tune in through the weekend for the rest of our programming thank you thank you thank you for all of your support you help us build a better world every day so thank you so 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 much and everybody have a wonderful evening